Welcome everybody, I'm Bill Wilkerson along with Dave Rowe. Two very interesting football teams, teams in transition, the Steelers and the Chiefs. And one person we will not see has been in an awful long time wearing jersey number 32, Franco Harris. Exactly, Franco Harris is no longer with the Pittsburgh Steelers. All the speculations that we had this week, whether he would be back or not, are over. He is not going to be here for the game. And this team, as we watch this record-breaking run by Franco, has got the function around Walter Abercrombie and Frank Pollard. It's not the same team. The big question to be answered today is how will they react to it? Also, the Pittsburgh Steelers have a new quarterback in David Woodley. Cliff Stout is now in the USFL. Now on the Chiefs side of the ledger, they too have a new quarterback, not by design, but by accident. Absolutely. Bill Kenny, the thumb injury, as we watched Todd Blacklitz here last year, under a lot of pressure. He's into a tough roll right here. Watch this. He almost gets sacked. Great poise. Throws a touchdown pass to Henry Marshall. On defense for the Kansas City Chiefs, their number one draft choice is Bill Moss, and all he has to do this afternoon is to fight all pro Mike Webster in the middle. But we expect a lot of throwing here this afternoon, and both clubs can throw the ball well. Oh, they certainly can. It's a precision passing. Makovic has got his team really well coached and disciplined in the passing game, and so does Pittsburgh. It's going to be an outstanding game. I just can't believe the action we're going to have. Going to be tough for the Kansas City Chiefs to win here this afternoon because the Steelers have been almost unbeatable here in Pittsburgh. As you can see here, 88 and 23, a very tough job. Going to be a good ball game nonetheless. The Steelers will receive here this afternoon. You're looking at the main man there, David Woodley. David, of course, has excellent receivers in Calvin Sweeney, Benny Cunningham, the tight end, and also John Stallworth. The Steelers have won the coin toss, and they will receive. And the man in the middle will be the rookie, Rich Ehrenberg, out of Colgate. As you see, Nick Lowry there, one of the best kickers, Dave, in the National Football League. What a story on Nick Lowry. It was with eight teams, eight different teams before he caught on here and really came on strong. Lowry gets a foot into it. Going to come down to Ehrenberg. A couple of yards deep. He's going to come up the middle. Ehrenberg, 10, 15, almost found the hole. Got out to the 18-yard line. And that's where the Pittsburgh Steelers offense will put the ball in play as Albert Lewis put the stop on Rich Ehrenberg. There you look at the Steeler offense come out onto the football field. And they will be quarterbacked by David Woodley, the shadow, the ghost of Terry Bradshaw. Dave is finally gone. What a difference in leadership here. A hopeful leader as compared to, a, of course, a way laid back leader. There you see the Pittsburgh offensive set on first and 10 from their own 18-yard line. David Woodley is the quarterback. There you see Pollard, a wing on the right side. The lone setback is Abercrombie. Abercrombie gets out to about the 22-yard line. A Steeler offense, as you see Sweeney, the offensive line, which really went through some injury problems, Tunch Ilkin, Craig Walfley, Mike Webster, the All-Pro Center, Blake Wingo, and Larry Brown. Larry Brown has had some injury problems. Had a bad knee, but they let him rest most of the week and then bring him on for the big one. Give him a gain of four. Call it about second and six. Out near the 22-yard line. There is Craig, brother David Woodley. And they shift into an eye now with Pollard, along with Abercrombie. He wants to put it up, swings it left to Abercrombie, looking for room to run, hemmed in, and finally dragged down by Calvin Daniels. But there is a flag on the play, and we will check the flag as we get ready to give you a look at the Kansas City Chiefs defense. That Chiefs defense has really come on well. There you're looking at three outstanding defensive lines. And they can be three tremendous matchups. Art Still, of course, Bill Mass that we've talked about, and Mike Bell. Outstanding line. Also, the linebackers, Charles Jackson, John Zamberlin is replacing Jerry Blanton, who is on injured reserve, Gary Spaney, and Calvin Daniels. And there you look at the secondary. A young one, Albert Lewis, Kevin Ross, the youngsters, but a good set of safeties in Lord Burris and Duran Cherry. There's been an awful lot of speculation and talk about Kansas City's secondary in that they got rid of the old pros, so to speak, and there's been a lot of controversy as we listen to the call here. They're talking to Kansas City, so obviously it's against Pittsburgh. The decision is whether to take the down and make it third down or whether to take the penalty. We'll see what the Chiefs elect to do here. The first offensive series, David Woodley and the Steelers. Well, now have to make up some yardage. Let's check it out here. Illegal block, number 74, offense, still second down. That was Terry Long. The rookie out of East Carolina, the man who may have the biggest arms in football. Oh, I was down and looked at him. Boy, you will never see a guy bigger than that. Five foot 11, 270 pounds. Oh, boy. 
When the Steelers break the huddle, they'll be looking at second and 16. 14.05 to go the first quarter. Bill Olkerson along with David Rowe. As you look at David Woodley there, seeking to make up 16 yards on second down. He has Pollard and Abercrombie split. As Woodley drops, Woodley is hit and down he goes. That Kansas City Chiefs defense led by Big Mike Bell, who had 10 sacks last year, along with Art Still. Well, that's exactly what the Kansas City Chiefs had hoped for. They went to their four down linemen. They brought in, of course, Bell is in there, Moss and Still. As we watch it from the end zone here in the left side of your screen, you'll see Big Mike Bell coming in. But there's no one to double there. They just cannot. They've got two people on Moss in the middle, and that's what exactly what they wanted to do when they drafted Bill Moss, is to occupy people in the middle and get that pressure. And they're getting it today. Lewis Lips, the number one wide receiver out of Southern Mississippi, checks in along with Rich Ehrenberg, the rookie out of Colgate. It's third and about 25 to go now. And David Whitley is backed up on his own four-yard line. Watch for Chiefs blitz here. There's Whitley on a delay to Pollard. Pollard is not going to get out of there as Calvin Daniels makes the stop for a loss of a yard or two. Also Mike Bell in there, so the Kansas City Chiefs defense coming out and showing some very strong resistance to this Steeler offense here on the first offensive set. Well, it really puts them in a tough position. They're going to have to punt from their own end zone. They can't get the normal 15-yard drop from the ball to the punter. Colquitt is really under some pressure. And, of course, Kansas City is standing inside the 50-yard line to receive this ball. They're going to have excellent field position. Craig Colquitt now will punt it to J.T. Smith. J.T., when he is healthy, is one of the better kick returners in the National Football League. There he is right there. He's standing at the Pittsburgh 44. Colquitt hangs it out of there. J.T. takes it at his own 49. He's at the 45 and down to the Steeler 42-yard line. 48-yard punt by Craig Colquitt before David Little can make the tackle. David Little, by the way, is the brother of former Dolphin All-Pro guard Larry Little. There's the offense there with Todd Blackledge along with Billy Jackson, Theotis Brown, Willie Scott, Carlos Carson, and Henry Marshall. They can throw the football. They certainly can. Very precise in their passing. I look for them to immediately attack. They've got good field position here on the inside, the 40-yard, uh, excuse me, 45-yard line. I look for them attack immediately. First and 10 for the Chiefs at the Steeler 42-yard line on the turnover. There is Todd Blackledge, going to put it up right away on the first down play, got plenty of time, and he's got a target. He's got a first down at the Steeler 32-yard line. So coming out right away, Blackledge puts the football up and gets close to the first down. Bill, the best way that you can get over rookie jitters in a big game like Todd Blackledge is here is to immediately make him throw a pass, not let him wait for that pass. If we look at the defensive line, that's the line that's got to put pressure, of course, on Blackledge. There's Keith Willis, Gary Dunn, Edmund Nelson. Willis had 14 sacks last year. He will have to be a big force here because they will have to put some pressure on Kansas City. There's a secondary of Brown, Washington, Sheldon Woods. First and 10 for Kansas City at the Pittsburgh 32-yard line. Ed Beckman checks in. He's number 85 there in the left slot. He's in motion back to the right side. There's Blackledge giving up the left side and finding a hole down to about the 27-yard line is Theotis Brown. Jack Lambert, the captain of the defense, co-captain along with Donnie Shell, and now Lambert is coming out of there, and they can ill afford to lose a linebacker, and you know why, Dave. Absolutely. They only have six linebackers, and they're playing four at a time with this 34 defense. If Jack Lambert is hurt, that could really be a deciding factor in this game. We're going to have to watch him closely as he's hobbling to the sideline. He has led this team in tackles every year that he's been here, nine years in a row. Steelers very thin. They were praying that they wouldn't get an injury at linebacker. That's exactly what they have. It's going to be first and 10 now as David Little replaces Lambert at the Pittsburgh 27-yard line. Todd Blackledge on the first down play. He's going to drop and set. He's got time. He's got a target. It is caught down at the 7 or 8-yard line. He found a target and crossing down in there for a 17-yard gain was Carlos Carson. Carson had 80 catches last year for 1,351 yards. Watch the time that Blackledge has here as he sets up. And watch the poise. Tremendous overhand throw. And he has all the time in the world there to find Carson. The way they run this Kansas City offensive passing game, that ball is thrown on a timing pattern. That is, the ball is up before Carson ever makes his break. 
They're taking Jeff Lambert off the field. We see him going to the sideline, whether that's for an x-ray or, excuse me, they're taking him into the locker room, and he can't even put that foot down. Kansas City first and goal at the seven-yard line. Beckman is a spot to the right side, back in motion to the left side. That's the Otis Brown, and he gets down to about the six-yard line. One thing that the Chiefs wanted coming in to the preseason and coming out of it was a good running game. John McEvick told us this morning he knew he wouldn't have a Joe Delaney to work with, but he wants some semblance of a decent running game. Well, a crushing blow to Kansas City, of course, was the death of Joe Delaney. I have tremendous admiration for that young man. He gave everything he had out on the football field. And whether you want to use cliches or not, but he was an all-around football player. And they've got had to overcome that. And they do need a good running game. But this Pittsburgh team has answered the call many, many times down here. They're wily old veterans, so I look for them to answer. Second goal at the five. End zone. It is caught. But Carlos Carson is knocked out at about the one-and-a-half-yard line. Chris Brown took him out as Carlos Carson did a square out on the right side, but he couldn't get those shoulders turned to head toward the end zone. Carlos, a very dangerous receiver, as we take a look at our first quarter score there. New England 7, Buffalo nothing. It was Steve Grogan passing to Stephen Starring, 65 yards. Boy, that's a good throw if I ever saw one. You know, the interesting thing, a lot of people are talking about New England and the American Eastern Conference or the American Football Conference being a real power this year. There's John Makovic. He's looking at his club with a third and goal at about the one-and-a-half-yard line. There's Billy Jackson, the short yardage specialist. Will he get the ball here? Ocean Beckman. A fake. Running with it is Blackledge heading for the end goal. Touchdown! Todd Blackledge. He faked the motion to the left, took it back to the right side, and Todd Blackledge has a touchdown. He looks just like a rookie out there. <laughs> What a great call down here. I know that McElvick calls, makes the calls from the sideline, but watch this fake here. Everybody, even we watch him as a cameraman, our experts at NBC cameraman here, of course, catch by coming around. What a great call. And that is a touchdown. He wanted to spike it. He did, but no celebration after that, or it would have cost him a penalty. <laughs> there is Nick Lowry, one of the best kickers in the National Football League. 44 out of 45 PATs last year. And he gets set to put Casey up by a score of seven to nothing. There's the kick. And there's point number seven. So, on their first offensive drive, the Kansas City Chiefs behind the throwing and the running of Todd Blackledge lead here by two yards, consuming 258. Todd Blackledge took it in on the roll. And now the Steelers offense gets chance number two. And the ball drifting down in the end zone to Rich Ellenberg. He's at the five, ten. 15, 20, that way to run, 25, 30, 25, still on his feet, up near midfield for the Allen ball. That's why they drafted him, that's why he made the football team a 49-yard return by the 5'10", 200-pound rookie out of Colgate, the number nine draft choice. There is Rich Ehrenberg, and we'll be back. The three rivers and jumps to have some big plays in this football game, and already we've had a couple of big plays. The Steelers now with David Woodley. First and 10 at their own 48-yard line. That's Paula the wing on the right side. Abercrombie's the lone setback. He wants to put it up and does. He's got Sweeney, and Sweeney is hit immediately up near the 45-yard line of the Chiefs, and that's by Albert Lewis. Albert quite a story, 6'2", 190, as you look at Cal Sweeney there. He last year was a losing receiver because of injuries to Stallworth. Let's take a look again at Rick Ehrenberg. This is what got them out. Ehrenberg, of course, was a sensational. They, in preseason, they said they had to get the ball to him. Watch his 47-yard return. The only thing stops him is, of course, the punter makes an effort to get him out of bounds using the sideline. But that's what got him down in this field position. That's called it second. And about one yard to go for the Pittsburgh Steelers at the KC 43. That's a pitch to Pollard. Pollard's got him the run. First down at the KC 40. Now, as you know, Dave, the Steelers love to trap out of the split back formation. Do you think they're going at the Chiefs early with the trap action? I've been watching the play, of course, of Bill Moss and Mike Webster in the middle. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, they came right at Bill Moss the first series. Of course, they got, they got deep, but they're coming out to attack. And Frank Powell, Pollard, what, a, what an average he had last year, four and a half yards. That is the first down for the Steelers. At the KC 40-yard line, there's David Woodley, the man who has to get the job done here. Woodley on the first down play is rolling, looking for a receiver. He's got Sweeney. It's caught on the 25-yard first down. And the arms of Albert Lewis 
looks as though they're putting Sweeney on Lewis. 16-yard reception. Why going at Albert Lewis? Well, watch this reception. You'll see why they keep on going back to Sweeney because Lewis has given him so much room there. Look at the difference in room. There's no one within three or four yards. That's why they're going to continue going until Lewis comes up and attacks Sweeney. Until he does that, they'll go to him all day long. Alvin Sweeney, the leading receiver last year. Stallworth wide on the left side. They'll operate initially out of the eye. They've got a first and ten and marching toward the Casey goal line. There again, the chop inside to Frank Pollard, and Pollard pulls his way down to about the 22-yard line. Let's talk about the trapping philosophy of the Pittsburgh Steelers offense. When I played against Pittsburgh, they trapped out of an odd formation. They trapped out of what in the pros we call red formation, which is split backs. The backs are on either side of the center. And they trapped from that because Franco Harris had the great ability to cut up field. They are, they trap all the time in there because they're not big. They're not real tall linemen and they want to get angles on their respective defensive linemen. It's got to be second and about six and a half now at the KC 21 yard line. Pollard on the left side, Abercrombie. Abercrombie gets the football. He gets a block from his tackle, Larry Brown, but he cannot get away. And Gary Spaney makes the hit. Let's check now on scores from around the National Football League in this first week. The Chargers out in front of Minnesota, 7-0. Dan Fouts, who else? A pass to West Ham. Well, what else is new in San Diego? <laughs> they really love to put that football up. New Orleans under Bob Phillips looking for a big year. And it is 3-0 Atlanta leading New Orleans. Mike Luckhurst, uh, field goal from 38 yards out. And there's Chicago leading Tampa Bay, 3-0. Field goal by Bob Thomas at 25 yards. They call it third and about six and a half now. Just outside the 20-yard line. Woodley and the Steelers trying to tie it up their third and seven nothing. He's got plenty of time. He's got a target. Oh, it is caught by Rich Ehrenberg. And depending on where they mark it, it may be a first down. It is a first down. There he is, Rich Ehrenberg. time in the world throws to Ehrenberg now watch Ehrenberg right here he catches the ball now was it a catch or not they ruled it here in Pittsburgh that it was now if we were out in Oakland that wouldn't have been a catch of course for <laughs> Pittsburgh <laughs> all right we have a first and ten at the KC 12 yard line as the Steelers are on a march now they have Pollard and Abercrombie you heard the crowd warning Ehrenberg back in there Pollard gets the football but Pollard is hit immediately by Gary Spaney now to New York for an NFL update All right. Well, thank you, Bob, and good to be with you. And we have ourselves quite a football game here in Pittsburgh. Call it second and 11, just outside the 13-yard line. Frank Pollard out now, and Elton Fields is in. Second and 11. There's Woodley. He's got plenty of time. Where's the target? He won't get it out there in time, and he did not. Intended for Walter Crump, Abercrombie. And he was covered over there by Calvin Daniels. Calvin has really come on well. He had a ton of time to throw that time. Could not find a target. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League and intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Steelers and the National Football League is prohibited. So now, Dave, looking at third and 11, what do you want here? Well, I think I'm going to go back to Ehrenberg again. Chris, they brought him in. He has just been sensational. You don't do these things as a rookie. You saw Chuck Knoll there wondering if his club can make this third and 11 play from about the 14-yard line. Woodley looking, throwing, Sweeney, but he drops the football. Sweeney was in the arms of a couple of Chiefs, and they knocked the ball free. So now they're going to try the field goal as Gary Anderson will come on. And what a year he had. He was a pro bowler. He had 27 of 31 field goals. He has hit 15 in a row here. You saw him work out. Boy, does he look confident. I saw him kick a 55 and 60-yard field goals just like nothing. And I'll tell you what Chuck Knoll calls him is La Machine. <laughs> Just outside the 20-yard line. It's going to be a 31-yard attempt. And it is 16 in a row for Gary Anderson. And that cuts the lead down to Kansas City 7 and the Pittsburgh Steelers 3. We'll be back to Three Rivers in just a moment. Sentiment to bring back number 32 here. <laughs> no doubt about it. As Gary Anderson prepares to kick to Larry Ricks and Stefan Page. That's Page a couple of yards deep. 
He's going to bring it out. 5, 10, 15, and out to the 17, and that's enough of that as David Little puts the stock on him. David Little has quite a pair of shoes to fill here this afternoon. He certainly does. He's come in in a tough situation we have not seen. Uh, of course, Jack Lambert come back yet. Cubs and the Mets will crash head on this Friday night, and here's a preview. Little oh, curtain the heart and soul, and now he's injured. He's not out here right now. He evidently sustained a toe injury, which is real easy to do on AstroTurf. The adhesion on AstroTurf always causes what they call turf toes, where you actually break your toenails off, and I don't know if that's what happened to Jack. But if it is, there's the Otis Brown. He's got a first down out near the 32-yard line. The Otis Brown, 6'2", 225. Donnie Shell put the stop on him. The Otis Brown trying to take up for some of the loss of Joe Delaney. I mean, it takes an exceptional back to do that, but that 13-yard gain is certainly something that John Makovic was looking for. Here's his running style. So watch him take the handoff. Now watch him break through the hole. There's a large hole there. But boy, does he glide when he gets out there. Breaks that tackle. That may be the answer to the loss of Joe Delaney. Well, they got a first down out of it. And let's see what they do on first down. Blackledge on the delay and coming around the left side. He's got some room to run in about seven yards. Is Herman Hurd the speedster? Right here is Kansas City 7, Pittsburgh 3, now to NFL 84. All right, Bill, Steve Grogan here with his second touchdown pass of the first. Thank you, Bob. Boy, they're going to put some points on the board in that ball game. Well, they may be kicking field goals elsewhere, but I guarantee they're going to score touchdowns here. This man is happy here. That's John Makovic. His offense is rolling. They have second and three now at the Steeler 38. And over the right side, the Otis Brown trying to bull his way for the first down. Going to be about a yard shy. Donnie Shell coming up to make the stop along with Edmund Nelson. Nelson starting for Keith Gary, who had a sprained elbow, and also Keith Willis started the ball game for John Goodman, and now you have the injury to Jack Lambert, so things have not gone well early in this ball game for the Steelers. Well, we we'll see the Vikings got on the board as Les Steckel got his first points as the new head coach of the Minnesota Vikings. The Otis Brown four for 24. It's third and very short for the Kansas City Chiefs near the 40-yard line, their own 40-yard line. Billy Jackson is now in the backfield. He gets the football, diving ahead. I don't think he got the first down. Oh, boy, is it going to be close? I don't think Billy Jackson got the first down. It all depends on the mark. Well, if that referee just came in on side marks, it is good, but he isn't marking it where I thought it was. He got the first down. <laughs> but not wow. by much. I did not think he made that much yardage. Right, watch right here. As he, what he does do is he leaps over top. Robin I, Cole and then David Little. I thought he was stopped. So did I, but it's not what we think is where the ball is marked. <laughs> and that's a first down at their own 42-yard line. One thing really interesting is the play selection. We always talk about play selection. That's the selection of plays that Kansas City is running. They're really keeping Pittsburgh. Blackledge for the bomb. Left side. Ken Cox through his fingertips down at about the 15-yard line. Anthony Hancock covered by Sam Washington. The ball was there, but a flag is down. That's exactly the point that I was going to make. The play selection, if you watch Anthony Hancock run back to the line of scrimmage, the play selection really kept Pittsburgh off guard. That was an infraction against the Chiefs, but we can see here that, for the most part, although John McEvick's passing plan is a medium to short-range passing plan. The way he builds in that timing on the passes, he can get deep with it, too, as you see him there. Every once in a while, they're going to throw that bomb up. By the way, in case you're wondering where John Makovic got his passing ideas from, he was a great disciple of the BYU passing game. He coached against them, liked it so much he adopted it. An interesting thing also, Bill, is that you see that card that he's looking at right now. That has the exact plays that he wants to run. It has them in order, and he sends in those plays according to that chart that he's reading. It's now second and ten at the KC 42-yard line. Stefan Page is checked in, and Blackledge going back up top of flag goes down. The ball is not through. It is bouncing around at the 15-yard line. And I think the Chiefs have recovered, but the ball may still be free. Let us see. There was an infraction before this play ever started, and the Chiefs have the ball back. 
it was a fumble. There's an awful lot of pressure from the left side, and it was a fumble by Blackledge. He got tackled and could not get back to it. The interesting thing is to find out who's the penalty on. Is it going to put Kansas City way deep in their territory, or is it going to bring the ball all the way back out to the 40, 45-yard line? Well, if the Steelers committed a penalty there, Chuck Noll is going to have a sacrificial lamb at halftime. They did. Oh, my, my, my. The football is going to be back toward the KC goal line, and Pittsburgh is guilty of an infraction. And again, it's going to move it out. That's about a 50-yard penalty, if you can believe it. Instead of them having the ball on the five- or six-yard line. Offside, number 92, defense, lined up in the neutral zone. Well, maybe that's why Blackledge never got a chance to handle the football because Keith Gary was right on top of it. That certainly could be why, but that's a big penalty for that man. That's a 50-yard penalty. Watch the replay here. You'll see Blackledge sets up, and he gets a lot of pressure from the top side, number 92 coming in, 93, excuse me, coming in. And there's the fumble by Blackledge. Now watch where the ball ends up. It ends up almost on the 5, 8-yard line by the time they end up kicking it. The penalty is put against the, uh, the Steelers, excuse me, and the ball's brought almost out to midfield. 50-yard penalty. Now it's only second and five as Blackledge rolls and gets the ball away. First down up near the 46-yard line in the arms of Sam Washington is Anthony Hancock. Well, they've got some receivers. Hancock, the speedster behind Henry Marshall, Carlos Carson, and Stephon Page as you watch Anthony Hancock go back. And now let's go back for an NFL update in New York with Bob Costas. Moments ago at RFK Stadium in Washington, back goes Dan Marino, looks for Mark, super duper, it's a 26-yard touchdown, the penalty was against the Redskins, the score holds up, under Don Shula, Miami is 36-8 against NFC teams. Let's go back to Bill. Marino is back, and Duper is there, seven points on the board for the Miami Dolphins. Mm, what a game that must be. All right, we have a first and ten here for the Chiefs. He's under heavy pressure. Gets rid of the football through the hands of Willie Scott. Boy, did they get some pressure back there. Willie Scott, the intended receiver, but they had Keith Willis in hot pursuit of Todd Blackledge, and they got some heat on him that time. You want, you want to talk about pressure, you watch Todd Blackledge, number 14, rolls to our right, his weak side. Look at this coming behind, but look at the poise on him. He knows he's going to get hit. Still throws the ball, and it's close off the fingertips. That's not a first or second year player. That's a very experienced player. They would love to get some production out of Willie Scott, the tight end, just to take some heat off the double coverage of their wide receivers. How about that? Old, old, excuse me, old uh, Minnesota comes back with Jan Stenner, who father time, kicking a 41-yard field goal. This is the oldest Brown looking for the corner and gets up to about the 41 and a half, 42-yard line. Theotis Brown was originally signed by the St. Louis Cardinals, and they had the Otis and Theotis backfield, but since O.J. is going to be the featured back there, Theotis had to be a blocker, and quite frankly, he's not a blocker. He certainly isn't. He's got the speed. He's a speedster. He gets out in front. It's a lot like Franco Harris. Everybody here thought that Franco Harris, of course, was the great blocking back, but he wasn't. That's the end of the first quarter, and there you see it. The Chiefs lead the Pittsburgh Steelers by a score of 7-3 on the Todd Blackledge touchdown. We'll be back in just a moment. The Wilkerson along with Dave Rowe. There you see it, KC7, Pittsburgh 3, Todd Blackledge running in for the touchdown. Gary Anderson got the three points on a field goal. I'm awfully amazed at the size of the offensive linemen. I only retired four or five years ago, but the offensive linemen are huge today in comparison. Out of the shotgun, going to be third and about seven. Stefan Page is the favorite target for the Chiefs in a situation like this. Let's see what Blackledge does on third down. Here comes pressure. He gets the ball away. It is almost intercepted. Chris Brown, a rookie out of Notre Dame, but a flag is down. That should have been an interception. That's the old defensive, inter offensive interference. Excuse me, defensive interference. As we watch them out there, they're waving. They're saying, hey, bring the ball back this way. <laughs> But that could have been seven points the opposite direction. And we also have an injury on the football field. Looks like one of the interior linemen. For a moment, it looked as if Chris Brown would have the interception. Let's check out the penalty here as they discuss it with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Illegal contact, number 33, defense, first down. Harvey Clayton is the man accused. He comes in on the nickel. Must have been an illegal chuck. That's the illegal chuck. And 
And we'll be back here at Three River Stadium with the Chiefs up by a score of 7-3 in just a moment. Season had been the offensive line for the Kansas City Chiefs with John McEvick hoping they could keep them together for a year, but already we see it's going to be pretty difficult to do that. Yes, the man that the man is down, of course, is David Lutz. He is not injured per se. It's an injury to the leg, so it's not a serious injury, even though you know everything is serious. The reason for the stretcher, of course, is probably because he weighs 295 pounds, and it's awful hard to carry him off. But as we mentioned, John Makovic had really wanted some improvement from his offensive line, and with Herkenhoff, Buddy, Rush, Condon, and Lutz, who's now out, will be replaced by Jim Rourke. When we talked to him this morning, he said that been, had been one of the single most improved areas on his football team. So they will remove him from the field, and we'll get back to action here momentarily. Let's see what else is happening around the National Football League. Oh, the Chargers are back. Well, I'll tell you, San Diego can certainly put the scores on the on the scoreboard in 14 to 3 already. That's touchdown pass number two to Wes Chandler from, of course, Dan Fouch. So they have oiled up the old scoring machine. There, the Detroit Lions expected to win their division against the other team expected to win their division, the San Francisco 49ers. Billy Sims, two-yard run, Joe Montana to Carl Monroe for six. And the Giants, they found some offense. Can you believe that? Absolutely. Giants leading the Eagles by a score of 7-3. to three. There is Dave Lutz, who's being taken into the tunnel, and he'll be replaced by Jim Rourke, 6'5", 263, five-year man out of Boston College. So, Todd Blackledge, who's been very impressive in his first NFL start here, replacing the injured Bill Kinney as his club first and ten. At the Pittsburgh Steeler 36-yard line. It's not been afraid to put it up either. Certainly has an awful lot of pressure, as you said, on Jim Rourke, though, to come in and have to go against the likes of Keith Willis, who last year had 14 sacks. Black ledge on the fly down to the left side. Carlos Carson out of bounds, and a flag goes down. Did you see Carlos change that pattern at the very last moment, go behind that defensive back? Or did he ever? He is, He's really a glider. He reminds me of Lynn Swan. Everybody compares the great ones to Lynn Swan. And, of course, you know who that is right there. Sam Washington, number 41, is having to cover the great Carlos Carson. Sam Washington, number 41, of course, took the place of Mel Blunt, who had been here. And I remember how old Mel Blunt is because number I got 41. his bubble gum card. Defense, defense. That was Sam Washington replacing Mel Blunt. Bad news for the Chiefs. Dave Lutz has strained ligaments and will not be back here this afternoon. Well, of course, one of the kicks against Sam Washington was that he is only five foot eight. And that's not tall. They don't think that that's tall enough, of course, for a defensive back. But he's played exceptionally. He plays way above that height. There's the pitch to Theotis Brown. Got some blocking out in front and gets down to about the 20-yard line. Brown. Theotis Brown in the arms of David Little, who replaced Jack Lambert. So two key performers for both sides out early in this football game with 14.32 to go in the first half. And the Chiefs leading it by a score of 7-3. Kansas City, of course, is knocking on the door already. They're on the 20-yard line. They have played, it seems, all day in Pittsburgh's uh, territory, both on defense and on offense. So they'll be looking at second and six, as Willie Scott's the tight end on the left side. Carlos Carson wide to the left side. And Henry Marshall wide to the right with Billy Jackson. And now Fiotis Brown strong to the right side on the wing. On the second and six play. That's Blackledge. That's Marshall. Caught but dropped out of bounds. That was a good throw, too, as I'll tell you, Blackledge is really showing us some composure out there. He is. He's very, very poised in his throwing, and he's not afraid to attack Pittsburgh at what their strength is. Watch this pass as he releases this pass. Watch how he has to throw over top of the defensive corner, and the safety's rotating over there. There's the corner jumping for the ball. There comes the safety rotating, and look how close it was. Boy, those referees don't make mistakes, do they? They are very, very good. KC, one for three on third down conversions. They're looking at one right now. It's third and about five and a half at the 20-yard line. Out of the shotgun for Todd Blackledge and the KC Chiefs. He's got time. He's got a target off the fingertips in the end zone of Ed Beckman. Good coverage down there, but again, an excellent throw by Todd Blackledge. Mike Merriweather had the cover, and he is going to be one outstanding football player before his career is out. They say in Pittsburgh that he is the best-kept secret in the NFL. He's strong, he's sleek, he's, he's just speedy. He's got all the 
essentials to be an outstanding linebacker. Interesting situation here. Nick Lowry, 24 of 30 field goals, except Bill Kinney was his holder, and Jim Arnold has never held before. It's going to be interesting to see this because there's a lot of difference. The hands are so important here for the holder. He's got to get that ball, get it down on the spot, spin it, and have it straight up. And as you said, he's never done it before. We shall see. It could unnerve Nick Lowry. Let's see if it does. Looks pretty good. It is good. So the old pro Nick Lowry nails one from 38 yards away. And now the Chiefs are out in front by a score of 10 to 3. Back to three rivers and jump vicious early in the season, aren't they? <laughs> I'll tell you what that's all about. When asked about Franco Harris, Chuck Knowles said, Franco who? I guess uh, part of Franco's army is in the stands out here. <laughs> that's Nick Lowry kicking off to Rich Ehrenberg at the 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Out to about the 28-yard line. Looks as though Ehrenberg is going to be Mr. Excitement here in Pittsburgh. There is Richard Ehrenberg. And we'll be back. The Steelers have the football here in Three Rivers. 10-3 KC. Right there, he has a sore toe, but if he can walk, he'll play. I told you he'd be back. He's led this team <laughs> too much to ever play with, you know, not play with a, a sore toe. And boy, did he lift the crowd when he came back. He wow. sure did. David Woodley now has number one draft choice, Lewis Lips, wide to the right side. He's got Pollard and Abercrombie on the first down play. Here comes Mike Bell. He trips him, and he is sacked back at the 25-yard line. Bell didn't get him, but Art still did. And that is quite a combination. Today's game is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By express mail service from the post office, we deliver excellence for less. And by Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Gatorade is thirst aid for that deep down body thirst. This is Bill Wilkerson along with Dave Rowe. And as we move into the second quarter of action, 13-29, Casey up by a score of 10-3, and the Steelers have had trouble moving the football. They certainly have, but I haven't seen Bill Moss in there. I'm watching that. Just, I just keep on watching that, waiting for something to really happen big there. Maybe he's occupying people, allowing Bell and Steele to get the job done. Second and 11 for Woodley. He's got a target, and it is intercepted by Darren Cherry. 30-25, out of bounds at the 22. All-pro Darren Cherry picked it off, intended for Benny Cunningham. That's why he's an all-pro. Certainly is. The old wily old veteran of four years is one of the older statesmen back there. Drop back into a zone coverage where each person covers up just a selection of the field and played the eyes of the quarterback and rotated to the ball and took it right out of the hands of the receiver and off he went. Well, for a moment, Benny Cunningham was open, and I'm sure that's what Woodley saw, but what he didn't see was a safety coming over and snatching the ball away. That's one of the finer points about a zone defense. That zone, that zone defense, as you drop back, you play the eyes of the quarterback, and he played it exceptional. Hey, how about that? Detroit coming back over San Francisco. Eddie Murray, 39-yard field goal. First and 10 for the Chiefs. They are leading 10-3, and they are knocking on the door once again. That's Blackledge wanting to go up top. He does. Carlson knocked away. Great defensive play, but in it, there is what we call. It's going to be called on the rookie Chris Brown. I didn't see the hand on the receiver, but apparently that must have been one. Oh, boy. was that? I, I thought it was an exceptional play. Watch here. Watch Chris Brown. They're going to be on the right of your screen. You can see the pressure that Blackledge is under. Lays it right up there. There's the... Oh, wait a now, minute. There, there, there may be the contact. Excuse me for stuttering, but it was so close. If we can run that back and look at it, watch the right hand of the defensive back. If he puts that right hand on the wide receiver, that's where the contact was made. Let, let's watch it again. Now, watch the right hand of the defensive back in black. Right there's the hand. Awfully close. Well, it's first and goal at the two-yard line for the Chiefs. Billy Jackson, the Otis Brown. The Otis Brown will not get in there. Only to about the one and a half yard line. The ball apparently came free. Donnie Shell has it, but they're going to give it back to the Chiefs. So, John Makovic now trying to exhort his troops to get that football in. Number 58 is back in action. I knew you couldn't keep him on the sideline. No way. Now, he's urging his team to come on, but Pittsburgh has been in this situation so many times. You don't have the phenomenal record that Pittsburgh has in this stadium. 
without having been in that situation and answering the call. There he is. Look at Lambert. Look at the look at the intensity on his face. Second and goal. Larry Ricks is in there along with Billy Jackson. A roll by Blackledge looking through in too far for Willie Scott. Good coverage in the end zone back there by the linebacker Mike Merriweather. And that's the second time he's given us good coverage in the end zone. I've watched that time. I watched uh, excuse me, Jack Lambert come out that time. He is hurting. I can see him walking. He's favoring that toe greatly as he walks back to the huddle and is obviously an awful lot of pain. But boy, can he play with intensity. That toe just must be absolutely killing him. He gets his hands on a chief. He'll kill him. <laughs> He's that kind of player. <laughs> Blackledge, four for nine, 39 yards. Just third and goal. Can the Steelers keep them out? The Otis Brown. He's going in. Touchdown. That hesitation on the left side, he got a block, and into the end zone he went. He certainly did. He got an outstanding block there. Matt Herkenhoff, who's awfully slow. No, excuse me, that's not Matt Herkenhoff. It's Billy Jackson right there. 40. Look at that block. Tremendous block. There was absolutely nothing out there for him to outrace. So at 12.05 of quarter number two, the surprising Kansas City Chiefs. Watch Lambert here. You can see he's not running like he usually does. Goes down and can't get over there. His job and his position on the field is to watch for that cutback, but he certainly could not have gotten to the outside with Yotis Brown's speed. Well, the toe obviously is hurting him. The thing that Jack Lambert does best is his range, his depth on his drops on passes, and the range that he has, as we watch Billy Jackson be taken on the field, the range that he has back and forth, his lateral running ability is, is probably the best in the league. That's what makes him a perennial all-pro. Billy Jackson, a big short yardage man blocking there. That was a three-play, 22-yard drive. After the interference, they got the ball on the two-yard line. By the way, can you believe what Jack Lambert played in high school? Quarterback. <laughs> he must have been a real sight to see. As Nick Lowry nails through point number 17. There's Nick Lowry and a surprising score here. Kansas City leading Pittsburgh by a score of 17 to 3. And the Steeler offense has had probably coach. That's Chuck Noll. That may, be, that may be the back of his head, but his hair is standing straight out. Now, where is he with this football club? Is he rebuilding or is he retooling? Well, it's an interesting concept. When you rebuild, it's usually you don't expect to win. When you are remodeling, that means that you're changing a lot of the players and you expect to win. I believe he is remodeling. He expects to win this year. Well, it's going to come down to one of his new role players. That's Rick Ehrenberg. 15, 20, flag goes down. Ehrenberg goes down out of his own 34. Did you see something, Mr. O? I certainly did. That was an obvious clip. There's no doubt about it. 59 is over there talking to the referee, saying, hey, look, he just fell in front of me. It wasn't my fault, but they're going to bring that ball back. And if they mark off that penalty from the 16-yard line, the ball's going to be inside the 10. Todd Seaball is the guilty party. And he will cause the Steelers to start from inside their 20-yard line, already trailing by a score of 17 to 3. That's one way to get your name mentioned, you know, when you're a special teams player, is to do a penalty like that. Of course, the coach doesn't like to hear it mentioned. And the coach will see it on the film. Oh, yeah. The big eye, as we used to say in football, the big eye, meaning the camera, doesn't lie. It does not. Personal foul, blocking below the way for 60, 60 receiving penalty decline. Illegal block, number 59, receiving team accepted. I guess that's an editorial comment by the coach there, huh? He just turns his back <laughs> on the whole thing. Let's take a look at what else is happening around the National Football League on this opening week. Well, we'll see the Redskins have come back. Joe Theismann and company, 7-all. And we'll be back here with the Chiefs out in front by a score of 17-3. to And Pittsburgh has the football first and 10 from their own 8-yard line. Dave, will they ever see him again? I don't believe they'll see him here. I, and there's the Chuck Who sign, of course. I hated to see that with Franco Harris. I had a great admiration for him, both as a player and as, as watching him as a fan. I just, I really hate to see him not break the record here in Pittsburgh. First and 10, Woodley putting it up from the eight. He's got a target. He's got a first down out near the 22-yard line. Lewis Lips, and number one draft choice out of Southern Mississippi, and he's had people raving and comparing him to Lynn Swan. A 15-yard reception. 
He's got all you need for a wide receiver, Dave. He absolutely does. He has the greatest acceleration on this team. You can see how fast he'll get down the field. And you can see how he's standing wide open right there. You have to respect the speed of a Lewis Lips. That's what really has opened up the passing game in the last three or four years. The 4-2, 4-3, 40 yards sprint men. They've got such an ability to get downfield. That's it. Woodley had something going here on the first down play. He wants to put it up again. He's got time. And on the far sideline, they're going to give him a catch. Oh, if it was, it was a great catch. That was Lewis Lips. And we'll be back here in just a moment. But first of all, to New York and NFL 84, an update, Bill McAtee. All right, thank you, Bill. Lewis Lips being compared to Lynn Swab at a rich stadium. Another touchdown by the Patriots set up by another long pass from Steve Grogan to Stephon Starring. Got to McNeese State in Louisiana makes the grab. That set up the Collins touchdown. 21-0. The Patriots look strong. Thanks, Bill. New England 21, Buffalo nothing. Right here, we have a 17-3 ball game. And that's Frank Pollard looking for room to run. Some fancy stepping gets him out to about the 33-yard line. That really is not Frank Pollard's game. He's not the fancy stepper. He's the bull in the china shop here. That's when, I, when I used to play, I remember playing you know, against players like Pollard. It's kind of like tackling a fire, uh, fire hydrant. They're just so low to the ground. They're compact. And boy, can they hit you. David Woodley, 508, 55 yards, one interception here this afternoon. 10.40 to go, second quarter. The Steelers are trailing, but trying to get a touchdown before the half comes to a conclusion. Wing on the right side, and Abercrombie is really hit, trying to turn the left corner. They really put the shockers to him. Gary Spaney, who has led the Chiefs in tackling the last six years, really put a shot on him. This is going to be awfully close to see if the penetration there by the defense, the defense really penetrated, and you can see once he was hit, he didn't go anywhere. It's going to be a close measurement. Eric Holly was also in there. They're going to bring in the chains from the near side. Let's talk about this Pittsburgh offensive line. They are shorter than most offensive lines. Why? Well, Chuck Knoll has a great philosophy that uh, the offensive lineman, if he's shorter, he's got greater ability to, and greater leverage. As we watch, it's going to be short. It's going to be fourth down. They're going to have to punt it. But back to that point, they are much shorter. But man for man, Pittsburgh is probably one of the strongest teams in the league. I, I look at the guys, for example, Bruce Wingle, who we haven't heard about very much this morning, this afternoon. Strongest player ever at UCLA. Mike Webster, Iron Man, strong man in 1980. Of course, John Kolb. Everybody knows the story of great John Kolb and his strength. Phenomenal strength. You look at those guys, and I used to play in the winter, and their arms used to just scare me. <laughs> Greg Colquitt now will punt it to J.T. Smith, and he scares the Steelers if he gets some room to run. Oh, oh and punt. Very poor punt. Let's see if he gets the roll. No, he does not. And nothing is going right for the Steelers at home here, despite that unbelievable home record. There's Craig Colquitt. He doesn't hit many like that. 22-yard punt. Kansas City 17, Pittsburgh 3, and the Chiefs have the football when we come back here to Three Rivers. They certainly can. You know, the, the big stat that we have not shown is the fact that every drive that Kansas City has started has been midfield or inside Pittsburgh's territory. And now they're at their own 45-yard line. Willie Scott tight on the right side. Deotis Brown and Larry Ricks. Black Ledge. Deotis Brown, good receiver, and cannot get away on the right corner from Chris Brown. We pause briefly now for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Channel 11, WPXI TV, Pittsburgh. Off the yard, down. Flared Theotis Brown out of the backfield and tried to get him downfield, but. Chris Brown put a sure tackle on him on the corner as Herman Hurd and Billy Jackson check into the backfield. There's Chris Brown right there, the rookie out of Notre Dame. Call it second and 11 now. They give on a delay and Ricks is hit, but still driving. Herman Hurd, brother. Herman Hurd, the speedster out of Southern Colorado, stopped by Gary Dunn. One thing that's happened in this, this series right here is that Jack Lambert is not in there. He's on standing on the sideline next to one of his coaches. See what happened on this delay. Watch the replacement for Lambert, number 53. He's going to miss the tackle here. Now watch. No, it's not 53. Excuse me, 57. Misses the tackle. That's a tackle that Jack Lambert wouldn't have missed. <laughs> There's a football he probably would have grabbed, too. 
Kansas City three out of four on third down and looking at third and about eight here. Out at their own 47 yard line. Out of the shotgun, Todd Blackledge. He's got a little time. He's got a target. And he will not get the first down. I don't believe it was Carlos Carson making the catch. But I think Sam Washington prevented him from turning up toward the flag. Yes, he did. Carlos Carson made a foolish mistake there, a mistake that he doesn't usually make. As he receives this ball, as we watch Blackledge here, he's looking straight at Carson. Now, as he receives the ball, you'll see he has the first down right there, all he has to do. But he gives a little bit in an effort to get upfield. It's going to bring down fourth down and maybe a yard. They're going to have to punt the ball away. Whereas if he had completed it and turned upfield, they'd be off and running. Carlos knows he missed it. By the way, the other tackle, Matt Herkenhoff, has limped off. They've already lost David Lutz. Jim Arnold now, who did not have a good 1983 punting, will... Put it in the air to Lewis Lips, and Lewis Lips can get you out of your seat in a hurry. He is Mr. Excitement. If he gets time, we'll see what he can do with the football. Good hang time, and Lips is going to let it bounce, and it's going to be into the end zone. He almost took a chance that would have given his club the ball inside his ten. There's an old adage that any time the ball is above your head, you're standing on the 10-yard line, you let it go. Lips did that that time, and the ball took a sideward bounce and almost stayed out in the field of play. But that is, as you mentioned, a cardinal rule. If you're standing at the 10, don't back up to get it. Don't back up to catch the ball, because if it's inside, it's going to be inside the 10, most times it'll carry into the end zone. Eight minutes and 20 seconds. Elton Veals and Rich Ehrenberg check in. A pair of rookies. Veals, the 11th round draft choice out of Tulane, wearing jersey number 38. And Rich Ehrenberg, number 24 out of Colgate. David Woodley has had problems with the Chiefs' defense so far. He's got a first and ten at his own 20-yard line. Lips and Sweeney are his wide receivers. On the first down play. He's got time. He's got a target. That's Lewis Lips. Caught! Give him 10 more. Make it 80. 80 yards. Wow. What a throw. And watch Lips right here. Now watch the move he makes right here on the safety. Fakes him out. Turns on that acceleration. And it's a touchdown. 80 yards. Did I say we were going to have some excitement here? That's David Woodley's longest of his career. Anderson. It's up. It's good. We've got a football game here at Three Rivers. We expected some fireworks. And there he is. Lewis Lips. They say the second coming of Lance Swan. One of the great things that Chuck Knoll said about him is that he has the greatest approach to the game. Let's watch why that protection was there. There's the matchup we talked about. Matt Webster, 52. Look at the size of his arms. He's in there. That's Mr. Hustle. Gave all the time in the world to David Woodley on that 80-yard pass. There's a happy young man. But I must say, Lewis had to work for that football. It wasn't automatic. He certainly did. He made an excellent catch, but the move that he made on the safety is just unbelievable. We have a great football game here, but also stay with us for the second half of our NFL doubleheader. Most of you will see Houston quarterback Warren Moon make his NFL debut when the Oilers take on Marcus Allen and the world champion Raiders. And the others of you will see the Bengals meet the Broncos or the Jets take on the Indianapolis Colts. Your team plays here next on NBC Sports. Well, do you know the fastest way to get over 100 yards passing? How's that? That's to throw an 80-yard bomb, because now Woodley is 6 for 9 for 135 yards. Not bad halftime stats. Now, that looks like he had a heck of a first I know, pass, sure did. did. Other than that play, they haven't done a whole lot so far this afternoon. All right, Anderson puts it in the air. Too far for Stephon Page. Isn't it amazing what a touchdown can do for a football oh, team? Boy, well, that juice you up. You know that he kicked that ball 75 yards in the air. That's a long kick. From his 35, he kicked it out of the end zone. Well, maybe the pros will change their kickoff rule the way they did in college. I must admit, I can't make any sense out of that college rule, which penalizes you for kicking the ball into the end zone. <laughs> well, they do a lot of things to try to, to try to make more scoring. 
But I don't agree with it either, Bill. That'll be like the 30-second clock in basketball. They'll change it again. Well, with the time remaining of eight minutes, it's going to be interesting to see what Blackledge does here. Is he is he going to get is he going to get conservative, or is it, are they going to continue on the same thing that's gotten them so much success? Well, Dwayne Woodruff, Dwayne Woodruff is back in at left corner replacing Chris Brown. Let's see what they'll do on the first down play from their own 20-yard line on the ground, trying to give it to Herman Hurd. And Herman has company, Dunny Shell, the old pro, along with Mike Merriweather, and Shell had himself quite a preseason. He certainly did. Of all the years, they said that he had the best preseason. Hey, how about that score right there, 14 to 10. Mark Mosley, 31-yard field goal. Dan Marino, Mark Duper, 74 yards. That's the second touchdown catch of the afternoon for the man they call Super Duper. Well, don't you know that Charlie Jones and Bob Greasy are having a good time there? Well, they knew they would when they mixed those two teams. There we have New Orleans out in front of Atlanta, 14 to 12. Bartkowski to Alfred Jackson for 50. Todd to Tyron Young for 18. Well, Richard Todd certainly is going to add an awful lot to the New Orleans Saints this year. Caught it second and about six for the Chiefs at their own 24-yard line. The backs are split. And Todd wants to put it up. Here comes pressure. He gets it away. And the reason he didn't hit it was Keith Barry was all over him. And he couldn't get it out to Fiotis Brown. Well, I think the Steelers have decided they should play some defense because they said, look what the rookie did for us. I think we'll join in the fun. They certainly have. Watch how he runs around the outside. Now, Blackledge knows that he's coming. He sees him, he feels him, and he's just trying to get rid of the ball. Boy, he tell you, that hurts. That's an introduction to the NFL. That was Jim Roark replacing Dave Luce, and he couldn't handle Keith Gary. Three out of five for Casey on third down. They've got third and six. Wouldn't be surprised to see a blitz here. Let's see what happens. Can Blackledge get this football away? No, he goes on a delay to Herman Hurd. And he does not get the first down. The Steelers are all fired up as Keith Gary makes the tackle once again. Boy, will one long pass add emotion to your entire team. As a defense, you hear the crowd as they're cheering the Steelers for holding the offense there. But that one play has ignited this entire team in this entire stadium as this is, what, the 95th sellout today? 95 in a row for the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's Lewis Lips. And Lewis can do with the football from here the same thing he did a few minutes ago, catching it. Well, it sounded like booze, but I think what they were saying was Lewis. He took it. A flag goes down, and he goes down in the arms of Vic number 62. And that is Lingner, the center guard. Adam Lingner, a 43-yard punt. For a minute, I thought he was going to let the ball go over his head. He's pretty cool for a rookie, I isn't too. he? He almost he looked up as if he was going to let him go over top of his head. And all of a sudden, he just popped up there and caught the ball. But I think this penalty is going to be again against... Pittsburgh Steelers put them deep in territory, but you can't throw 80-yard bombs unless you're on the 20. It's all designed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. We have ourselves a football game with 6.22 to go in the first half. Now, we knew Kansas City was going to throw. We wondered what the Steelers were going to do. Next Friday, for you baseball fans, you've got a ticket to the hottest games in town when NBC Sports presents primetime baseball. Now, some of you will see the Cubs squaring off against the Mets in one of the tightest pennant races in baseball. Then the others of you will see Reggie Jackson as he goes for his 500th home run when the California Angels take on the Chicago White Sox. And in the pregame show, Tony Armas of Boston will battle Darrell Evans of Detroit in the Gatorade Super Slam Home Run Contest. It's Friday night at the ballpark, beginning at 8 p.m. Eastern time right here on NBC Sports, the home of the 1984 World Series. It is now first and 10 for the Steelers. They are trailing 17 to 10 from their own 20-yard line. And the ball is fumbled. And Kansas City has the football. Just when things were going the Pittsburgh Steelers' way, David Woodley coughs up the football. Boy, is Pittsburgh going to have to answer the call right here as we see Mike Bell run off of the ball. He recovered the ball. The, the problem was in the exchange. Webster evidently didn't get the ball quite up to Woodley, and he dropped the ball immediately. Let's watch right here in the center. You can see the ball fall out right there. There's a scramble for the ball. I'll tell you, you cannot beat our NBC color men, can you? Or cameraman, excuse me, for picking up that action. Well, let's see if the Chiefs can drive a nail in the first half coffin of the Steelers. If they are to get in here now, I think what they can do is take the swing of emotion away from the Steelers because this crowd has gotten to the football game awfully hard to beat them when they've got the crowd behind you. They certainly are, and they don't have Lambert in there either. And that's a big and emotional factor right there. 
from the 21 yard line. That's Beckman, a wing on the right side field is Brown, the lone setback. He wants to throw. And it is stripped away from Henry Marshall by the rookie Chris Brown. I tell you what, as a one who likes the passing game, that's one pattern I do not like. Well, Kansas City, though, pay, plays that, that, that pattern better than anybody. They throw those quick outs. But Chris Brown really played that ball well. You know, there was an interesting story about him when he was drafted. He was a quarterback, high school quarterback, came to Kentucky. And when he was still available in the sixth round, <laughs> they called the scouts and said, hey, what's wrong with him? And they said, good night, take him, take him. So Pittsburgh took him, and they've been very pleased with him. Herman Hurd, the lone setback, he can really fly. That's Beckman in motion on second down. That's Hurd looking for Rogeron. Hurd down to the nine-yard line. That's what I meant. Herman Hurd has 4-4 four, four speed. He's the rookie, the third-round draft choice out of Southern Colorado, and that's the speed they're looking for. Absolutely, and that's also the play selection that they have. They are playing the ball. Watch this play right here. Nobody's expecting, and look at that acceleration. Everybody's thinking pass. It's second down and 10. Now it's third down and one, but look at that speed as he came off the ball. Everyone was expecting the pass play. Good block by Brad Buddy on that play. Just outside the 10-yard line, 5.41 to go. The Chiefs three out of six on third down. And now we're going to get a timeout as John Makovic and his Chiefs will like to take a look at what they have here. They're not a strong short yardage football team except close to the goal line when you've got big Billy Jackson going in. So now Todd Blackledge will go over and talk it over with John Makovic. Well, they don't want to make a mistake right here with the score 17 to 10. As you said, they can really drive a nail into the coffin, but they have to make this. Three points is fine. It's going to make it 20 to 10, but you really want to drive it in with that, with that touchdown. Well, as the Chiefs take a break, we will too, and we'll be back at Three Rivers in just a moment. What happens to them? Lambert goes out. The Chiefs can't afford to lose an offensive tackle, and now what happens? Well, Herkenhoff, of course, hurt his knee. He's out. They brought in John Alt. And David Lutz, we saw him carried off the field earlier with a leg injury, too. So they are thin in the offensive line. Third and one at the ten and a half yard line. Herman Hurd, the Otis Brown. Blackledge still looking. He'll get the first down and more. Down at about the seven yard line. He's got guts, too. He certainly does. David Little made the tackle on Todd Blackledge. Let's see what else is going on around the National Football League. The New England Patriots, a revived offensive team, 21-3 over Buffalo in the second quarter. Steve Grogan is on fire this afternoon. A lot of people are picking them again to be the a real power force in that Eastern Division. Everybody always counts on Miami, of course. And Atlanta now has taken the lead back as Bartkowski having a good, good afternoon for the Atlanta Falcons. And Tampa Bay leading Chicago 7-6. We've got a first and goal at the six and a half yard line for KC. Theotis Brown, he's got room. Theotis Brown, touchdown. Somebody opened a gigantic hold on the left side, and that's over there where the left guard, Brad Buddy, is playing. And Theotis Brown, all he had to do was just pick his way into the end zone. Watch Theotis Brown make this decision right here. When he gets up the line, a little stutter step right there. He steps outside into the clear. And that's how you become a great running back. When you have that great vision, nine rushes, 40 yards, that's good in anybody's book. Brad Buddy got Robin Cole. That was one thing that opened up the hole over there for him. Four plays, 21 yards, and Chiefs out in front, 23 to 10. It's Green Bay for real this year, 14 to 7 already over St. Louis. Well, with Lofton and Jefferson, they're always for real. <laughs> There's Nick Lowry. It's good. So the fumble by David Woodley just when his club was rolling has cost the Pittsburgh Steelers some momentum and seven points. You know, an interesting thing, Bill, when I was out talking, we stayed at the same hotel, of course, with Kansas City. What was really interesting was that Kansas City was so confident. They're such a young team. They had so much confidence. I talked to Bill Kenny about how Todd Blackledge was going to do, and he gave me some great insight to him. Of course, all the pressure this week of the hoopla of the Blackledge meeting, Blackledge, the coaching situation. I'll tell you, they have come to play. They are out there, and they're playing better football than they played all last year. Well, you know, you would have thought it would have been hard to improve on what Bill Kinney did last year. He threw for over 4,000 yards, and here you have a youngster, his first NFL start. You're going to figure he has jitters. 
but he is throwing the football and running this team like a seasoned pro. Well, that, he's a franchise builder. An interesting thing was when I talked to Bill Kenny, Bill Kenny is such a super player. I mean, both on and off the field, you just couldn't find a greater guy to talk with. He's open, he's outward about about his approach, and he knows that Blackledge is the, is the future of Kansas City and that he's got a lot of good years. But an interesting thing was that he really is pulling for Todd in this situation. He really wants him to do well. And John Makovic says Todd recognizes that he may not get the starting job now, but somewhere, someday, he will be a starter. So he's taking it with that attitude. That's Aaron Berg. 10, 15, good block, 20, 25, out to about the 26-yard line. You know, it really took some thought on the part of Chuck Noll to put this many rookies in his backfield. And as a matter of fact, Abercrombie and Pollard are the only veterans back there. They don't have a lot of running experience because I think everybody expected Franco Harris to come in. Uh, it was such a such an unbelievable uh, preseason camp because everybody thought that Franco was going to be there. Franco was going to be there. And all of a sudden, they had to resign themselves to the fact that, hey, look, Franco's not going to carry this team. And neither is Terry Bradshaw. And they've had to come up with some people to take their places. Franco turned down a half million dollars. I don't believe that's Aaron Burr. <laughs> really? Burn. Offer me a half a million dollars. Not myself. even on a matter of principle, would you turn it down? <laughs> <laughs> Art Sill made the tackle. Well, some people are very principled people. I mean, a half million dollars is the principle of the thing. Yeah, but even my high school principal didn't make that much. <laughs> the principal I'd be counting would be the interest. <laughs> oh, boy. Yards, well, at any rate, <laughs> as you said, the Steelers are resigned to the fact that Franco isn't here and isn't likely to be here. It isn't completely impossible, but they're going on without it. David Woodley now second and eight from his own 29. He's got some time. He's got Ehrenberg, and Ehrenberg has a headache. <laughs> the 34-yard line. That was Kevin Ross who put the hit on him, the rookie out of Temple. Or did he hit him? <laughs> now they've got Ross on one side. Albert Lewis, whom John Makovic told us this morning, is really coming on strong at left corner. Lewis in the nickel will be the man who takes the other team's toughest receiver, except on the Lips touchdown, Darren Cherry got Third stuck down. with Lewis Lips. And in case you missed some scores, we'll have them all with Bob Costas, Bill McAtee, and crew at halftime on NFL 84. That's Aaron Berg, and I think he's got a first down. Well, he does have a first down. It's going to move the change. And they've got a little bit over three minutes to play in this half. They've got to get another score. Zamberlin made the tackle on that one. Aaron Berg, of course, you know, came out of Colgate. What a story about him. The old Van Egan. The old Van Egan and uh, Marv Hubbard. But look at him run. They've had, you know, it's funny that a university like Colgate, just a small college, would have three great running backs. The Marv Hubbard, the Van Egan, and now Aaron Berg. Does Colgate give scholarships? I believe they do. I was offered one. <laughs> oh, in that case, we know for sure. Here's Woodley. He's going to scramble a little bit. He's got one target. He's too close to him, and that was a dangerous pass. That also is interference on Lloyd Burris. Lloyd Burris had to put his hand on him and then come over the top, and that's what the call is all about. You cannot touch the offensive receiver with your off hand and so many defensive backs do they put their hand on to reach over now watch watch this dying swan that David Woodley throws here he doesn't really get into the ball because he's getting an awful lot of pressure there from Art still so it's just a wobbler up there but watch the hand on the back there's the hand reach over that's right so many defensive backs do that and that's just it's a it's a free 15 yard penalty and you know who the guilty party is he's the first to cry who me yeah. <laughs> yes it was you 2.32 to go. They have a first and 10 at the KC 45. That's the first KC penalty. Let's see if Woodley can get the ball into the end zone. That's Stallworth, but too far, as he was being very closely covered over there by Kevin Ross. This also is one of the best drives that Pittsburgh has. They've driven from their own 25-yard line. They've driven only 30 yards. So it's not a long drive, but it's the best drive they've had. The other one, of course, was the long 80, 98, excuse me, 80-yard touchdown pass. And the only other points that they got, even came close to getting, was he's not having a really a bad day. Yeah, but the 80 yards. Yeah, that's the one point. <laughs> so you're, 
He's six for 11 for, for actually, what, um, 60 yards. Yeah, take off the 80, and then we get a true <laughs> picture. But they all add up, and nobody asks you how many long ones you had at the end of the season. Unless he gets one right here, which he's trying to do. Stoller! Touchdown at the 27-yard line. Mr. Clutch. There he is, John Stallworth. 18-yard gain, Stallworth only played in four games last year. And they still respect his speed as he drove the corner deep, turned upfield, and you can see the distance there that he had. Look at that experience getting those feet down. Oh, boy. I'll tell you, I used to watch him run, and I sure wish he was on my team. Stall I Stallworth, by the way, is wearing sort of like a flak jacket with pads in it because he had bruised ribs his last two games. I used to play in this stadium, of course, for the Oakland Raiders, and uh, I had many a long afternoon. When you talked about that great span of victories they had, I was on the other end of them a lot of times. I bet they loved you here. <laughs> All right, first and ten. And a little problem as Elton Beals has foot problems going the other way. Well, it's an interesting thing is that Mike Webster snapped the ball right up between Woodley's legs. Watch this snap again. Watch, it comes right between Woodley's legs. Boink, there it is, out to the side. Fortunately, Beals was right there to fall on the ball. Elton Beals, by the way, the 11th round draft choice out of Tulane, is the man about whom the University of Illinois got in trouble and the recruiting violation. You know, someone told me in, in one of our press clippings that he ran for 400 yards in a little game, junior college. We'll be right back. And a lot of fun, exciting plays, and you'll see all of this and more on NFL 84 coming up including our 80-yarder here. But based on the way Fouts has been throwing, Grogan has been throwing, Bartkowski, Marino, it's going to be a great highlight show. I'll tell you, I love watching NFL 84 on, on when I'm home and not doing a game. I love watching those plays. It really captures the essence of what's going on. Now we have second and about 15 for the Steelers. They're at the KC 32-yard line. Only two minutes to go. Woodley needs to put it up and into the end zone. He doesn't because he's wrapped up by that KC defensive rush with Mike Bell along with Ken Kramer back there in his backyard. If the pass rush is any indication today, then Bill Moss is doing his job, what they wanted him for. As we look at these scores, how about that one? 14 to 10, Miami's back over top of Washington. Dan Marino is back. Dan Fouts in that one over the Minnesota Vikings under new head coach Les Stackel. Oh boy, San Francisco's in a tight one, Detroit. Detroit really figures to be in this in this race this year. And the Eagles trailing the Giants 21 to 6. Ouch. How about that? 21 to 3. New England is really real this year. Third and about 15. There's Whitley for the end zone for Calvin Sweeney. Too far. He's got double coverage as he had both Kerry Parker along with Darren Cherry, the strong safety double covering. They read that pattern and knew exactly where to be. Well, here comes La Machine. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you better tell us where that name came from. Well, He's the guy who thought it up. That's the man who thought it up. They asked him one day because, really, the uh, kicker did not have a good preseason. Anderson only made six of nine. But Noel said, oh, La Machine is allowed to miss two or three every once in a while. This is the longest. This will equal his longest kick of his career, 49 yards. He's, He's got, got the, the leg. leg. Yes, oh, he boy. does. Easily. But he doesn't get it through the uprights. Well, it was easily long enough, but it yeah. wasn't easily enough in the middle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's easy for you to say. <laughs> we watched him yesterday, and what was he hitting from, 65 yards? Yeah, I was kind of worried about my Tom Dempsey record. See, I was on the field goal when Tom Dempsey kicked 63 Now, if I field. get a highlight of that kick, where will I see you? You'll, you'll see my, my rear is in the Hall of Fame because of that kick. I was blocking for him on the left side. And if well, I hadn't blocked, he wouldn't have made it. Well, that's what you say. <laughs> well, the 48-yarder by Anderson falls short. So, with a minute 44 to go, the Steelers don't get on the board. In case you missed some of the exciting action, the first half around in the National Football League, you can catch up with it there. Well, Bob Costas is really getting juiced up. He's got some outstanding plays. I know he's going to be running a, just a ton of these plays. And hopefully you'll all see that 80-yard touchdown bomb to Lewis Lips. Well, maybe we'll give him another one here from Todd Blackledge. He's not playing it safe, is he? No, he's not. But Carlos Carson either turned the wrong way or he threw the wrong way. He's sure checking out Chris Brown over there, isn't he? Yes, he is. They, 
they felt that Chris Brown they could work on it because they felt that Chris Brown gives too much depth on most of his pass coverage when he's in man to man coverage and he's got to cover that wide receiver coming downfield he keeps instead of a five or six yard cushion he keeps an eight to nine almost ten yard cushion so they thought they could throw the quick out and they've tried it an awful lot today Black led six of 14 for 45 yards a minute 40 to go second and ten from his own 31 he'll go from the shotgun here comes some pressure he's got the Otis Brown not for a whole bunch though up near the 36 yard line there is dad black ledge wonder what he feels about his son I guess you could guess right he was awfully proud of him we talked to him earlier as we watched black ledge put the ball back in play and finds Henry Marshall drops the football is it a fumble or not no it's not a catch it is not a catch you must have a football long enough to do an act coming to football, which is put both feet down and start to run. It's very interesting this week, all the hoopla about Blackledge, and we had a chance to talk to his dad about that crowd. Well, his dad, obviously, in a very tough situation because he's on one side. His mother had an interesting comment. Yeah. Said, we don't want Todd to throw nine interceptions, but we work for the Steelers. Well, it will be Jim Arnold punting. And Lewis Lips at his own 25 with a minute nine to go. So we'll see what Arnold tries to do, whether he will try to hit it to either sideline away from Lips or not. Well, Lips has never fair caught the ball. And that record continues. Good coverage by the Chiefs, and they'll put him down at his own 34, 36 yard punt. So with 58 seconds to go, are you going to put it up or not? I'm going to put it up if I'm Pittsburgh. They have got to establish a better offensive performance than they've had in the first half. They have got to get down, get somewhere close, and allow Gary Anderson to get out there with that leg and see if he can kick a 45, 50-yard field goal. With his leg, they only have to make it to about the 40-yard line. So we're only talking about basically 15, 20 yards. Now here's how we got the score of 24-10. Black ledge went in from two yards out. Anderson hit a 31-yard field goal first quarter. It was KC 7 and Pittsburgh 3. Then Nick Lowry hit a 38-yard field goal, KC 10, Pittsburgh 3. It was the Brown interference call on the Pittsburgh 2. Theotis Brown went in from the 2-yard line, and KC led 17-3. But then Lewis Lips lit up the stadium with an 80-yard touchdown catch, and then Brown 6-yard run, 24-10. That's Whitley. And is that a catch? Absolutely. Yes. That is John Stallworth. Kevin Ross, the defender, 20-yard gainer on that one. Well, as you said, they'll go to Stallworth when they need one. They'll really come to him. He's a veteran out there. Tremendous grace and poise. As I told you, he runs them off deep, does a corner, come back, out of bounds. Watch the toes on the sideline. Just gets those toes in before he's knocked out of bounds. Now, now here you can see the toes. Now, watch. Does he know where that sideline is? Boink, they're in. Rudolph Nureyev in cleats. <laughs> First and 10 at the 45. Where's the target? There it is. Same man, same result. First down. Well, why not go back to it? Well, I think one reason he's going there, working against the rookie Kevin Ross, is that the Chiefs probably have everybody in Kansas City covering Lewis Lips. Yes, they do. An interesting thing is going to happen here, though. If Kevin Ross starts coming up on Stallworth you look for the down and out the quick out right now is working we can see uh, there's Anderson warming up but the quick out where he runs that down pattern comes out because Ross is dropping off so far is working right now but the minute Ross comes up to take that away that veteran Stallworth will turn it up make an out and up and it's all over Katie bar the door all right you have lips on one side Stallworth on the other now you've got a big tight end right down the middle but the last time you tried that they picked it off Yes, they did, but Benny Cunningham is a, a whale of a target. He's actually a defensive lineman in disguise. That's very true. <laughs> and if he hadn't gone down from 280 to where he is now, he would have been an offensive yeah. lineman out there playing along with Larry Brown. I ran out one time, and I, I remember running out on the field and saw him, and I said, what's that, what's that defensive lineman doing with an 89 on? He's a wide receiver. I'll tell you what, you give Benny Cunningham a five-yard start and then try to run head on and tackle him, and you will see nothing but stars. Lips, three for 101, including the 80-yard touchdown. Stallworth, three for 55. There's Big Benny. 
And if he gets into your secondary, he is nothing but trouble. Woodley, 10 out of 1,696 yards, one interception. I talked about Benny Cunningham and his weight problem. One day they said he was running around here in the offseason. He was 280 pounds in a rubber suit, and he almost collapsed and died. They had to open it up and look like it's just a flood opened up there when he <laughs> let that water out. He's got some pounds on him, but he can catch the football, too. Only 40 seconds. Woodley looks for a target. There's no He walked the sideline two times, like you said, and then what happened on the third time? Curry Ross came up to take that out pattern right there. Look at right there. There's Curry Ross comes in your picture. Stallworth does exactly what we said, and there's the old veteran looking to come back for that ball. He did exactly what I said he would do. He ran that out pattern twice when Curry Ross came up to cover that. Excuse me, Kevin Ross came up to cover that. Boom, he took that long pattern. And touchdown. There is point number 17. So with only 33 seconds on the clock, the Steelers are back in this football game, trailing 24 to 17. Nothing is done in this game without a purpose. Absolutely. And that's a welcome to the NFL, Kevin Ross. He played with him on that sideline. Ross came up to cut him off, and goodbye, Mr. Ross. Well, the thing that happens is you see that down-out pattern happen twice in front of you. It's caught in front of you, and you have to close on it. And all of a sudden, you just get in your mind that they're going to dink you all the way down the field. They're going to do that little dinky out pattern. And as soon as you come up and cover it, boom, he turned it out and went down the field. Three passes straight to Stallworth, the, wet, the veteran, as you said. Great plays, 65 yards, consuming only 25 seconds on the clock. We said at the outset the ball would be in the air and we would have some scoring. And that we have already, 24 to 17. Stephon Page and Larry Ricks with only 33 seconds on the clock will drop back inside their five-yard line. As we mentioned, Stallworth only played in four games. He was banged up all of last year, missed the last two preseason games with bad ribs, and he said he regretted that because he couldn't help the youngsters at all on the sideline. He's a great veteran. Uh, there's, there's very few people can compare to him. He's well. Anderson to Stephon Page. Is he coming out? No. He's going to stay right there. Yes. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, on the touchdown catch, as we see what Stefan Page has done preseason, the thing we also saw was the great body control in the end zone. Now, he was in there, and Ross had run back into the end zone. He turned, concentrated on the football, went up and snatched it out of the air. The great wide receivers that, receivers that I've seen over the years totally concentrate on the ball. That's really what makes the difference. It's not how fast you run or the great patterns that you run. It's how well you concentrate on that ball when the ball is in the air coming to you. The greats like Freddie Bolitnikoff and here's Stallworth, Lynn Swan, an unbelievable concentration when the ball was coming to them. They're going to keep it on the ground with Theotis Brown, so the Chiefs are content, apparently, to go into the halftime trailing, rather leading by a score of 24-17. Well, we've only had 41 points scored in the first half. This <laughs> may wind up 80-79. to 79. The last club with the ball wins. It looks that way because the big play certainly has been a part of Pittsburgh's offense, and Kansas City has controlled the ball. You know, neither team is really running the ball well. Well, the clock is still running, but they've seen enough for this half, so they will go in. The game will now receive to get things underway in the third. Leading, rather leading by a score of 24-17. Well, we've only had 41 points scored in the first half. <laughs> this may wind up 80-79. to 79. The last club with the ball wins. It looks that way because the big play certainly has been a part of Pittsburgh's offense, and Kansas City has controlled the ball. You know, neither team is really running the ball well. Well, the clock is still running, but they've seen enough for this half, so they will go in. The game will now receive to get things underway in the third quarter. Casey out in front by a score of 24-17 as Gary Anderson prepares to get things underway. Stephon Page takes it deep and will not bring it up. Well, when Gary Anderson kicks off, the only thing you do is kneel down with the ball. The ball carries fantastic. You know, when you look at him, he doesn't appear to be a physically dominant kicker. I mean, he isn't uh, a bodybuilder type or anything like that. Doesn't appear to be a soccer player, but 
Man, does he get some leg into the football. And that's what happened in the first half here. Look at the Steelers' yards passing. 215 yards passing, only 11 yards rushing. That's certainly not balanced, but they're still in this ball game, and this ball game could turn any moment. We're only seven points apart, and of course, Kansas City has got to come out and establish that offensive dominancy that they had in the first half. As Blacklatch throwing on first down, he's got Henry Marshall. Marshall pops up the football. Let's see who has it. And Pittsburgh Steelers will have it. The ball is blown dead at the KC 29-yard line. But a flag is down. Looks as though Chris Brown came out of there with the football. But there's a flag down back at the KC 12-yard line. It looks like it's going to be holding. Number 53, offense, penalty declined. First down. Listen to this crowd come alive. They want to see their Steelers start off right. They know of all the problems that they've had in the preseason. Would well, they have 18 players that are not here from last year's squad? Right. Well, no. Only five from the original Super Bowl team. Two of those on defense. One of those out, Jack Lambert. Donnie Shell, the other one. A golden opportunity for the Pittsburgh Steelers at the KC 29-yard line. Sweeney wide to the right side. It might be interesting. Side. Might be interesting. Excuse me, Bill, to see if they come back to Stalwart since they were so successful before. Well, on the ground, Abercrombie looking for Red Baron. He gets about seven and a half yards. Walter Abercrombie stopped by Calvin Daniels. Boy, was Walter Abercrombie in the doghouse this preseason? He really stayed in Chuck Knowles' uh, doghouse all year. Luke and Birkenhoff both had knee injuries. They were the starting tackles for the KC Chiefs, and they're out of this football game. We'll see how much effect that has on the Chiefs' throwing game, especially. Give him five, second and five, at about the 24-yard line. That's Frank Pollard. Pollard showing some good pick a hole running as they had him closed off on the outside. Tried to cut back to the inside. And Stills, Spaney, and Bell were all involved in that stop. Art Still, an interesting study last year. I talked to John Makovic this morning. He wanted to make sure people understood that when they said Still lost all that weight on a vegetarian diet, he said he's not a flake or anything like this. He said he eats chicken and all this sort of thing. So do a lot of players. As a matter of fact, only about five ordered steak this morning. But he said he wanted to see if he could play at that lower weight. Found out he couldn't, and I put the weight back on. But he says he's no sort of flake in case you get that idea. Woodley wants to put it up there. The bricks by Calvin Daniels, and he's got him. What a very opportune moment for the KC Chiefs to call for the blitz. Well, they, I think Pittsburgh really made a mistake on this play. It was third down and one yard line. You'd think that you would go for a running play. Of course, Woodley's trying to fool him up, but he certainly did not fool Charles Daniels, number 50. Now it's going to be fourth down and and he's going to have to kick a 47-yard field goal to even get three points out of this big opportunity they had. Well, Gary Anderson certainly has the leg. Let's see if he can nail it. He missed one previously of about 49 yards. Good placement. Good leg. That's three points. And we now have a four-point differential. It is now Kansas City 24 and Pittsburgh 20 with 12.56 to go in the third quarter of action. When we come back, the Chiefs will have the football leading by the scenes as though the miscues are coming into play. Well, just when I thought Pittsburgh was going to take great advantage, the young Kansas City defense really answered the call and only had to give up a field goal. Well, they're not going to have another return either. I think that the returns against Pittsburgh are over for this year. It may be over for a lifetime because that man, Gary Anderson, does not allow you to bring it out of the end zone. You know, we always talk about the foreign kickers from South Africa. There he is, and we'll be back here with KC leading 24 to 20. Briefly, for station identification, this is the NBC Television Network. Channel 11, WPXI-TV, Pittsburgh. The Chiefs are first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. They lead by only four, 24 to 20. That's Beckman in motion. Herman Hurd gets the football and doesn't get much room to run. He is nailed just outside the 20-yard line. 
Today's game is brought to you by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. To arrange a thorough test drive, simply phone your nearest BMW dealer. By Michelob, one smooth and mellow taste tells you that some things speak for themselves. And by Wheaties, big time crunch, big time treat. Wheaties, what the big boys eat. I eat Wheaties. I'm a big boy. You certainly are. Look at that. <laughs> He's all of about 400 pounds this I afternoon. I bet you Jack Lambert eats Wheaties, too. <laughs> he does anything he wants to do. <laughs> That's the Otis Brown, and he gets to about the 30-yard line, maybe just a tad shy of a first down, depending on where they mark it. Chris Brown made the tackle. And Robin Cole. We haven't heard much from Robin Cole this afternoon. We certainly haven't. You know, the big, the big decision was to move him from outside linebacker into inside linebacker, and he was supposed to be quite a force. Well, Robin replaces Lauren Taves, who's re who retired. Brian Hinkle took Cole's position on the outside, and on the other outside, replacing Jack Ham, you have Mike Merriweather. And, of course, you lose Jack Lambert, and David Little has to come on. So coming in with a thin linebacking core to begin with, this certainly doesn't help Chuck Knoll's situation. That was a first down, by the way. And that's the Otis Brown, and he gets only about one. What are they becoming conservative now? Or what? It looks that way as if they're becoming conservative, but again, we have to go back to Makovic. He runs plays according to the down and distance. He keeps them. He has them in order. And you see that chart again that I mentioned. He sends the player in with the play, and it's written on that chart. He does not deviate. Most coaches will say, okay, give me a play. Third down and eight yards. Down, third down, ten yards. Give me a play. What do you think will work to the coaches up in the score box? But Makovic does not do that, evidently. He takes it right off that chart. Let's also see if he runs at the place vacated by Jack Lambert and now occupied by David Little. Second and nine. They didn't get much on the last play, only one. That's Hurd and Brown split on the second and nine play. The play has blown dead before it's caught on the far side by Anthony Hancock. That flag is dropped in the Steelers secondary. Boy, they better be glad that that was blown dead because Sam Washington took a chance on the interception. Offense, number 14. Woo, took too long getting that play underway. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. If you're going to gamble, don't gamble on Anthony Hancock because you're never going to catch him. That's right. All they do is start striking up the band and start playing tunes if you're at home. Just turn around and head for the extra point unit. What is play number four, Coach? I don't know. That's fourth one down. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm going to send somebody in. He'll tell them. <laughs> Here All he right, comes, he'll tell him. Second and 14. Well, what would you like to do on second and 14? Tell me that. Well, I'm, I'm going to run an out pattern because I've got less of a chance for a uh, an interception. All right, you got Carson this side. you got Hancock in the slot. You want an out pattern? Let's see if you'll get it. No, you're down the middle, and you've got a first down in the arms of Henry Marshall at the 45-yard line. There are a couple of Steelers who got back there to Todd Blackledge, but not in time. He got the 19-yard gain. Donnie Schell and Harvey Clayton on the tackle. Well, this is why I'm a defensive tackle, because I thought it was going to be an out pattern, but Henry Marshall, what a story. Nine years he's played there. He's seen all types of quarterbacks, all the way back from the Lenny Dawson days almost. And he's been through a whole multitude. I bet he enjoys catching the ball from Todd Blackledge, just like he did Bill Kenny last year. He enjoys anybody who throws. There's Blackledge again. That's Hurd on the screen left. Gets by Robin Cole. He's up near the 50-yard line. Robin Cole saw the screen coming, but he was not in position to make the tackle. Brian Hinkle had to make the tackle. Well, as Robin Cole came out there, he really was overextended, and he lost his balance. He didn't really come up with a, a balanced tackle. And, again, he's got to learn to do that. That's something that he did very well as an outside linebacker, but it's entirely different being inside. Because you're inside, you're closer in the action, and you've got a fan out. Whereas when you're playing outside linebacker, everything is to the inside of you. Call that second and six now at the Chiefs 49-yard line. That's Beckman, who will become a wing on the left side. Field is Brown, the lone setback. And somebody jumped offside. It was Brad Buddy. Well, I, I talked with Brad Buddy this morning <laughs> at the hotel. I couldn't believe that I played against his dad. I said, you must have been awful young. He must have had a child very, very young. He said, no, my dad was pretty old when he had me. <laughs> it really made me feel well. See what happens here. Oops. Yeah. He leaves the stall before the rest of the horses are ready to go. Well, that's what you call going on two and it's supposed to be on three. To the snap. Number 66, offense. 
Still second down. A little bit of trivia in National Football League circles. Brad Buddy and Ed Buddy, you know what they hold in common? Aside from the fact they were both offensive linemen? How about they both played for Kansas City? Is that something That's extra? one thing, but not the main thing. Oh, okay. Throw it on me. I'm ready. They were both number one draft choices by the same team. Offensive linemen yet. It is interesting. Second and 11 now from their own 44-yard line. Black ledge. Out pattern. Oh, almost picked off, but it was caught up near the 49-yard line of Pittsburgh. That was Ron Johnson coming over, swiping at it. But Hancock got it. When in talking with Blackledge, uh, Blackledge earlier, he said that they throw more out patterns. That is part of their, you know, really the main part of their offense philosophy in passing is the out patterns, the quick outs in the corners. And he has got an arm that you would not believe. In the warm-ups prior to game, he was throwing 45 yards with one step just firing 45 yards. Straight down the line for accuracy. All right. On third and about five. Out of the shotgun. He's got a first down right on the near side here. That's Stephon Page, their third down specialist. Mike Merriweather running him out of bounds. By the way, to show you how much the KC passing game is on time, there's a flag down, by the way. John Makovic says he wants that ball released from under center in three seconds. If it's from the shotgun, there is John Makovic right there. He wants the ball out of the quarterback's hands in 3.5 seconds. That's the time that it takes for a defensive lineman to get back and sack. If you can get it off in that, as we're going to wait for the call here, if you can get it Offside, off in that time. Number 78, defense, lined up in the neutral zone. Penalty declined. First down. But my point is, Bill, if you can get the pass off in under three seconds, around three seconds, you, can, you will not be sacked, you know, unless somebody really breaks clear. And, of course, Pittsburgh has not put an awful lot of pressure. They put late pressure on Blackledge, but as you said, he's, it's timing passes. It's, it's those three-second drops. He's picking up his receiver as he drops straight back, and they're getting the ball off before Pittsburgh really has a chance to get to him. First and 10 at the Steeler 42-yard line. Out of the eye formation, Hurd and Brown. Carson in motion, reverse motion. The fake pass play action. He's got Hancock. Hancock at the 25, down to about the 23-yard line, Anthony Hancock. Mike Merriweather again back there mixing up the action. Well, Blackledge might be, might be pleasing the Kansas City fans, but he's certainly not pleasing the Pittsburgh fans. A comeback pattern right here, a rocket for an arm. You can see the comeback right there. Run them deep, turn around, timing again. Run that 12 to 15 yards. Blackledge knows he's going to turn around on 15 yards and throws the ball actually almost before he turns around. Yeah, he does throw it before he turns. He throws it to a spot on a timing pattern. You have to be there and get it. John Makovic says if you break the pattern, don't come back to the bench. <laughs> First and 10, Beckman in motion again. Pass play action, looking, and almost one-handed by Beckman. Ed Beckman who is the second and oftentimes a third tight end, in this case a second tight end. Not a well-thrown pass that time. Big you know, decision coming up here, second down and ten. You're in the four-down area, what we call professional football, they call it the four-down area, where you can take a chance on four downs and not get hurt to pick up the first. A pass-catching tight end could be so vital to the Chiefs' offense. That's why they want to get the ball more to Ed Beckman and Willie Scott, they haven't really had a great tight end since Fred Arbanis. They've had some good ones, like Walter White, but no great ones. All right, second and ten. They'll go from the shotgun. Otis Brown is the up back. Blackledge under pressure, and that time something broke down. That's the problem that you said right there. As you watch 88 walk back, Carlos Carson, he did an in pattern. It was supposed to be an out pattern. There was some type of a mix-up in communications there. Now, whether it's Blackledge, he can, he's a young rookie, he can make those mistakes. Or Carson, again, he can make the same mistakes, but there was obviously a foul up there. Now, the receiver does have some options. For example, Carlos comes down, reads the coverage, and anticipates that the quarterback will see exactly what he sees, and then he alters the pattern. Well, obviously, either he or Blackledge didn't read the same thing. All right, it's third down. Ten yards to go. 
Rockledge has time. He has a receiver. Touchdown, Stephon Page. He got wide open away from Ron Johnson, away from Mike Merriweather, and there's a high five in the end zone, <laughs> and that should be a penalty. Where's the flag? That's the new rule. That's right. That should be a penalty. Is that a penalty or not? Now, see, they say it's spontaneous. It's ah, no, 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 no. <laughs> According to the rule, that should be a penalty. Now, when he spiked the football, that's spontaneous. But they gathered in the end zone for three people doing a high five. I'm surprised that Pittsburgh isn't calling for a flag on the play. I'm not touching that one. I'm just <laughs> going to let that one go right on by me. Because I, like I, I like the enthusiasm and motion. I like to see guys jump up and down when they score, especially if they're on my team. Oh, when did Jerry Seaman, the referee, tell us before the game? Isn't that what he said? That's exactly what he said. And that, seven more points for the KC Chiefs on a touchdown catch by Stefan Page. So... The Steelers are in deep trouble now as they now trail by 11, 31 20. Demonstration rule. That's good there. That's right. That's the spike. Now watch right here. Now, see, he's excited, but here comes something the high five. Now, That's you... illegal. All right, I'll go along with you. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the five yard penalty? The way things are going, the Steelers need a lot more than five yards right now. Let's see if Evanberg can get more than five. That's five. That's 10, 15, 20, and out to the 32-yard line. Greg Hill recently signed, made the tackle on Rich Ehrenberg. You know, the reason that that rule was put in was because while that high-fiving is going on, some other teams have become upset by that and decided to interrupt the fun bunch <laughs> and uh, give another type of five. Well, yeah, five, five and a fist in the nose. I think it's a lot was caused by, of course, Mark Gastineau of the New York Jets and his and his great, uh, Mark his great of course, antics out there. I wondered how long it would take to bring Mark Malone, see if he can spark this Pittsburgh Steeler team, and we're going to get our answer right here. That's Frank Pollard. He gets nothing. I'm sure the fans want Malone to put the football in the air. Now, Mark Malone, after Cliff Stout went to the USFL, was thought to be the heir apparent. But apparently, there was something that Chuck Noll wanted more out of his quarterback. So, Woodley, who's on the sideline there, maybe he does have a medical problem. Woodley was traded for from the Miami Dolphins for a number three and a future number three. So, we'll have to check and see what his medical problem is. Well, Mark Malone had a very poor preseason. Uh, he did not lead his team to a score in all the quarters that he played. But they are checking again, checking Woodley out. Evidently, maybe dizzy. He also drops the football. Let's see if he got it back. The Chiefs think they have the football. The official is calling it back. And the football has been on the ground on the snap on more than one occasion. I wonder how much. Now, that's, that's not uh, really a point that Mike Webster ever does. Okay, uh, very often, I should say. I'm stumbling to get it out. But I'm just so surprised to see Mike Webster fumble like that, fumble a snap. It's a new quarterback. They lose the snap right there. He gets the ball back. But Mike Webster, that is very much out of the ordinary for Mike Webster. And it may be because Bill Moss is in there, the pressure of Bill Moss. And, Are you and saying it's Webster's fault? Well, I believe it is. It, it's Well, of course, it could be the quarterback's fault if he's not getting the hands in there. And each quarterback has a different feel. But I think that he should have taken enough snaps on the sideline to not allow that to happen. Well, Hurd and Brown as the Chiefs have another golden opportunity just outside the 36-yard line. Black Ledge back to the air. There's Carlos Carson. Oh, close to interference, but not as called on Donnie Shell as Carson did what's called a fade on the far sideline and tried to get behind Donnie Shell. Is that offensive inter defensive interference? The question is, where's his right hand, and when was it yep. put on him? Yeah. That we couldn't see. The official was right there. Apparently not. But that Donnie Shell, as great a player as he is, is not supposed to cover Carlos Carson. Not on that play. He reacted to that play when he saw the ball going out there, but he was not primary coverage on that. That official was in perfect position. A coach is never going to argue with an official, well, almost never, if he's in position to see the play, and he was. Second and ten. It looks as though they're going for six. Blackledge. Here comes pressure. He's got the Otis Brown out of bounds at the 30-yard line. He got a half of it, five yards. Chris Brown, who's getting a big workout. 
from the backs as well as the wide receivers. We've had action here, and I'm sure there's been action. Oh, my goodness. Whoa. What happened to Dan Marino and the Redskins? <laughs> Boy, Marino he's thrown. to Jensen. Marino to Clayton. Marino to Jensen. 35-10. San Diego, Dan Fouts has been busy. Pete Johnson. Pete Johnson. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Two trucks in a row with Johnson <laughs> and Bunsey. Danielson and Wershing. And 2017 Detroit. Third and five out of the shotgun. Todd Blackledge needs five yards. Where are they? There they are. But a good defensive play turned in by Chris Brown. Mm. Chris Brown covered a lot of ground that time. Now watch these coaches. Watch their reaction. There's going to be the pass. There it goes. <laughs> oh, no. Well, let's go on to the next play. Can you interpret that for us? <laughs> 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 I think he thought he saw something which evaporated. Meanwhile, <laughs> Nick Lowry now will kick from the 38-yard line, be a 48-yard attempt. And again, he has a new holder, so let's see if that makes any difference. You can see Arnold talking to him. Normally, that's automatic. Let's see if he gets it through. It looks good. Yes, sir, he does. So the little conversation between Jim Arnold, his new holder, normally it's Bill Kinney who has a broken thumb, works for a 48-yard field goal, and now Kansas City out in front by a score of 34 to 20 over the Steelers here at Three River Stadium. Anderson teams up with Linda Carter as television's most unlikely detective. How mad have They're partners in crime. David Woodley experiencing some dizziness after having a good afternoon. We don't know whether he'll return or not. Here he sits with the ice pack trying to get himself back together. His absence cost the Steelers three points. Here's Ehrenberg. May let this one go out of bounds. No, he takes it. 10, 15, 20, and out of bounds up near the 22-yard line is where they will rule him out. Mark Robinson running him out of bounds. So, Mark Malone will return to quarterback the Steelers. Malone who also is an excellent receiver, much in the mold of Jim Jensen at Miami, a multi-talented person who can play either quarterback or receiver. When they first drafted him, I think they were drafting an heir apparent to Terry Bradshaw, but it just hasn't worked out that way. Certainly hasn't. He has. He stood in the shadows of Bradshaw, stood in the shadows of Stout, and now, of course, he's in the shadows of Woodley. All right, he's got Abercrombie and Pollard on the first down from his own 22. Wants to put it up on pass play action. That's Stallworth, and he's got plenty of company. So now, with the score here, 34-20, let's go to New York. Bob Costas, Bill McAtee for an NFL update. All right, Bill, as we watch Mark Malone try to move the Steelers, we want to show you a strange play in Minnesota. Ted Brown flips the ball back here to Tommy Kramer. Tommy would like to have this one back. Gil Bird with the interception, the former one, number one draft choice out of San Jose State. It's 42 to three, the Chargers lead it. Well, apparently the uh, Marine Corps discipline isn't putting any points on the board. <laughs> They're probably in great shape though. Well, trick plays, they either work real big for you or they work against you. Well, maybe next week. Mark Malone intercepted on the far side and that is Charles Jackson with the football returned to the Pittsburgh 20-yard line. By the way, David Woodley has a concussion and probably will not return. The inexperience showing there. Well, in fairness to Malone, that ball was tipped on the line of scrimmage by a defensive lineman. Watch here on the tail end of the play as we watch Malone drop back. Now watch the left ear screen right there. Watch still. Now he's going to get a hand up on the ball. Right. Oh, excuse me. Right. Oh, no, it was Somebody hit his shoulder, I yeah, think. Yeah, it hit his shoulder. That's yeah. what it hit. At any rate, there are more Chiefs than Steelers in the vicinity of the football. Steeler fans haven't seen much of this in recent years, have they? No, they haven't. It's going to be interesting to see the play selection here by Blackledge. Of course, a good come from Makovic. What they're going to try to do. Um, the old veteran quarterback would probably pop it right into the end zone, throw the big pass, and see if he can make the score quick. Well, let's put it this way. They should have. <laughs> yes, they should have. <laughs> I've seen Kenny Stabler do it a lot of times. That's Robin Cole who knew exactly what was happening on that play. 
the problem with that is he didn't have any fullback out in front of him. And when you try to send a runner naked around the defensive end, you've got problems. Yes, you do in Pittsburgh. Whether in or out of football. <laughs> it'd be an interesting, it'd be interesting to know how many plays Pittsburgh's defense has been in because they have been in almost all day. There's David Little, number 50, who replaced Jack Lambert, who was hurt. And they probably are going to have to sign a linebacker sometime this week. Second and 13 now, a passing down. Let's see if they put it up. Blackledge will. Here comes the blitz. Merriweather hit him, but he got the ball away anyway. Mike Merriweather almost cut him in half. And he had company from Edmund Nelson and also from Mark Catano, but he got the ball away just in time. You want to be a welcome to the NFL from your backside. You don't see this. It's right here. Now watch the ending of this play. Now that's what it's like to get hit in the NFL. Ouch. That's Mike Merriweather, and he is showing us everything that they told us about him. Great athletic ability. Yes, he certainly does. But they've got to get some pressure on Blackledge, or he is just going to pick them apart. He's having an exceptional day. KC, 7 out of 12 on third downs. They will shift to the shotgun. There's Blackledge, 16 out of 29. Been very effective here this afternoon. He's got some time. Where's the receiver? There he is. And oh, oh, oh. Ooh, ouch. that was J.T. Smith. And there's Murrayweather again. One of the interesting things in the offseason with the retirement of the great Jack Rudney, who I, I'll tell you, I played over a lot of times. Didn't enjoy it, but played over him. They brought Bob Rush in. And that's been quite a story. You, you want to see a hit in the NFL. When you turn around and you have to receive that ball, and you've got to turn up field, and you don't get the chance to turn around, this is what happens to you. Watch right here. He just about turns around. Blow. Remember Tom Jackson with Denver? Where's well, the same number right there? <laughs> they call Mike Merriweather a big Tom Jackson. 37-yard attempt by Nick Lowry. He hit from 48 previously. Again, a little conversation from Jim Arnold. Good snap and hold. Good kick. Three more for Nick Lowry. Maybe this is the year he takes the All-Pro award away from Gary Anderson. It's now the Chiefs 37 and the Steelers 20. And there is a very happy Kansas City coaching staff right there. Herrenberg. He is very highly regarded by Chuck Noll. Going to be in on third down situations and a good breakaway runner on kick returns. This one, let's see if he wants to bring it out. No, he's going to take this one in the end zone. Discretion being the better part of valor on that one. <laughs> Well, you're trailing by 17. You need to get to the other guy's end zone in a big hurry. There's David Woodley headed to the locker room with a concussion, and that's about it for him this afternoon. That's it for him, but it's certainly not it for Mark Malone. He's got to come in, and he's got to lead this team. They have got to score in this quarter, at least get three points. This is a big opportunity for them right now. They have got to get some type of an assemblance of an offensive drive right here, get some points, get back in this ball game. Well, when number 12 was quarterbacking, you were never safe, even in a situation like this. Let's see if the same applies to Mark Malone. On the first down play, this is not going to make the fans happy, and also it's going to bring a play. Well, it's a quick five yards. It's a fair five yards because they drew the off defense offside, so it's a cheap five yards is probably the best way to call it. Spanian still on the tackle. Offside against Kansas City. This is the third most points ever scored in an opener against... Pittsburgh Steelers, 45 points by Oakland in 1980. Were you on the ball club then? No, I wasn't there. I had, I had left for mm. greener pastures or other pastures. Chuck Knoll right here. Take a look at what's going on around the National Football League. Lots of scoring going on. We'll bring you up to date with Washington trailing Miami, 35-10. Big day for Dan Marino. San Diego, Dan Fouts, 42-3 over Minnesota. On the ground again. Pretty much nothing again. Back to the scoreboard. Detroit out in front of San Francisco, 2017, third quarter. New York now being challenged by Philadelphia, 21 13, third quarter. New England over Buffalo, 21 10. A couple of big plays by Grogan in that football game. And now Atlanta out in front of New Orleans, 26 21. Bum Phillips had been talking playoff down. There's still time, only the third quarter. 
Here we have second and about two as we look at Chicago in front of Tampa Bay. Peyton must be having a big day. There's Malone. He's going to run with it. And let's see if he got a first down. Where will they mark him down? He did get the first down. I've got a question for you, and you may know it more than I do. I almost had a heart attack when Malone ran that time because I thought to myself, if he gets hit, who comes in? <laughs> There it is, Green Bay leading St. Louis 24-13, third quarter. You're up to date now, and I'll tell you the answer. But the name probably won't mean much to you unless you're from the Midwest. Scott Campbell, rookie out of Purdue, seventh-round draft choice. Who hasn't taken very many snaps in the no, preseason. No, he has not. First and ten now for the Steelers on that scramble. Chuck Noll, I would think, would prefer that Malone not take those chances. Not now. Looks off the first one. There's Pollard. Great catch by Pollard. First down at the KC 48. He almost got his head torn off. Wow, you will not see a better catch than that. 17-yard gain. The ball was thrown real high for Pollard. As we watch, let's see if we can see it again. It was really a great catch as Pollard caught that ball coming across the middle. Malone comes off his primary receiver, picks up Pollard. He throws the ball high. Now watch the tail end of that. Pollard goes up for the ball and watch the contact here. Low. Albert Lewis hurt his hand. I think he might have gotten his hand in Pollard's face mask. He's going to stay in there, but I think he had a thumb injury. There he is right there. That certainly was a big play for Pittsburgh. First and 10 now at the KC 48-yard line. Let's see if Malone goes back up top again. He does. Here there is Stallworth. Caught. What a catch by John Stallworth. Out of bounds. Out of bounds. It does not count. Well, it's a game of inches, and it was a game of inches right there. Stallworth made a valiant effort to keep those feet in bounds. Let's see. Well, oh, he's on the line. You could see it perfectly. Absolutely. That he was, was on a great the line. shot, wasn't it? It was a great shot, and it doesn't count like it does in tennis. <laughs> <laughs> well, if McEnroe were here, perhaps he would contest it. <laughs> All right, second and ten. I'll tell you one thing, Stallworth is back. Yes, he is. If he can stay healthy, they can have an outstanding offensive team. I think Malone is loosening up, too. We can see that he can throw the football. Second and ten from the 48. Pollard on the delay. He still will need about, oh, six or seven yards. That was Art Still, who's having a big afternoon on the tackle. I think all of Kansas City is having a big afternoon on defense. I've been really continually watching that Bill Mass and Mike Webster matchup. If we can get a picture of it, you cannot believe. I'll bet there's not an inch of difference from Bill Mass to Mike Webster off the ball. They are so close that their helmets are almost touching. The only man who played like that a whole career was Bob Lilly. And he got away with it. He was almost never called for being offside. Well, they're going to go to four down linemen this time, so we won't really see it. Third and six now. There's Malone. Here comes pressure. Oh, there's Holding. <laughs> but it is caught by Ehrenberg. He's got a first down. Did you see what I saw? Oh, did I ever see it? Look, look at this right here. Oh, boy. Watch, watch Webster. Now watch Mike Bell come in from the right side. Now there's some holding. But Mike Bell, who you see rolling around there, <laughs> that was a three-point takedown. Oh, yeah. Oh. I saw some jersey out there. Man, oh. he just disappeared. <laughs> Ehrenberg, by the way, is hurt on that play. You saw a defensive lineman reaching, and suddenly he just <laughs> hit the ground. Well, what happens as an offensive lineman, and I played it over enough of them, what happens when they lose balance on you and they're being blown over, what they do is they reach up and they grab you and just yank you down. And it's the hardest play to see for a referee to see that holding when it looks like you're bowling over top of the offensive lineman and he just yanks you down. And that's what happened that time. More injuries as Cal Sweeney, the wide receiver, is limping. Ehrenberg is coming out. Lambert's already been hurt. Boy, this is going to be day. a busy time in the trainer's room after this one. Right here, it's 37-20. The Chiefs lead the Steelers. Steelers are moving. First and 10 at the KC 26 as Rich Ehrenberg gets some attention. You're right. The official was standing, I think it was the umpire, standing behind the defensive lineup. And all he saw was <laughs> the offensive <laughs> lineman underneath the defensive lineman. But he was clearly pulled down. That's Walter Abercrombie. But he is going to get Zippo. 
That's Franco's play right there, but it didn't produce the results that Franco normally produces. Well, a difference on that play, and this, and no, and no, no problem with Abercrombie is that Franco probably would have cut it back up. Well, Miami putting it on Washington, 35-17, fourth quarter. San Diego, 42-3 over Minnesota. And now we have a tie ball game. Both of those clubs could win their respective divisions. Philadelphia now trailing by only one, 21-20 to the New York Giants. All right, we have second and about nine for Mark Malone and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Will he put it up here? Quarter change. In the fourth quarter, he will. <laughs> At the end of the third quarter, the score. At Chiefs 37 and Kansas City 20. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station here in final quarter here at Three Rivers in Pittsburgh. Bill Wilkerson along with Dave Rowe, as you see, Rich Ehrenberg getting some attention. May have a cramp this afternoon. We'll see if he returns to the action. 56,709 here at Three Rivers as Cal Sweeney also has some injury problems. They were really depleted at wide receiver last year, the Steelers were. All right, second and nine at the KC 25-yard line. Mark Malone at quarterback. Woodley out with a concussion. That's Frank Pollard. Pollard's got room to run. Pollard close to a first down. Was that the trap? Well, it didn't look like a trap, but it certainly looked like a split in the offensive line. Excuse me, a defensive line. Lloyd Burris made the tackle. And that will move the chains, giving the Steelers a first and ten at the KC 16-yard line. I, continu I continually go back to one of our pregame stories, which was Bill Moss, of course, being from Pittsburgh against Mike Webster, who he watched through college. It's been a great matchup. I'll tell you, it's, it's kind of like a defensive lineman, offensive lineman, just a dream. Well, they can admire him up close, as he already has for three quarters. Malone, has got time. No, he doesn't. There's the man I was talking about. <laughs> Bill Moss did a great job on this play. He comes into Webster. What, let's see if we can look at it. He comes into Webster. Down comes the guard. He spins around. But Webster gets off of him and looks left. Well, Webster has primary pickup. He has, once he hits into Moss, he has to pick up to the weak side. That's why the guard came over there. But Moss did an excellent play. Third sack against Pittsburgh. So if Webster is pulling off of him, who was supposed to pick him up? The offensive guard is supposed to come down. Webster is supposed to hit him, stop his initial blow, and then the guard is supposed to come down and pick him up so Webster can pull off and go to one of the linebackers. But he didn't do it that time. And it cost the Steelers a sack, making it second and 19 now at the 25-yard line. Here comes pressure. Wide open stalwart at the 10-yard line. I think he is lamenting the fact that he couldn't get up quicker and run. 15-yard gain. Well, what happened on that play, Malone, Malone really, Malone was under a lot of pressure. Now, watch at the end here. You'll see somebody come in and almost take out his legs right there. So he didn't get the zip on the ball. The ball dies. Stallworth had to come down for the ball and, of course, didn't get the chance to get up and run 8 or 10 yards. Watch the pattern of John Stallworth, the old pro. He comes down. Again, fakes him on the outside, moves, drives him off the ball, and comes inside. Now, look at the defensive back. He lost position. <laughs> that could be cons uh, construed as being offensive interference, but it was not in this place. All right, third and four at the 10-yard line. Malone again. He better throw something quickly. He's got Stallworth, but he will not get the first down on this play. He had it up here. He just couldn't get turned around in time. That's how much Mark Malone says he needs for a first down. You know you're not going to kick here. No way. You're going for touchdown. They need two touchdowns and a field goal. You can always get the field goal from 35, 40 yards, but we've got an injured player on the field. Gary Spaney, who calls the defensive signals for the Chiefs, is down. As we mentioned, he's had more tackles for the Chiefs than any other player in the last six years. There's a lot of concerned coaches right there. Well, that's their main man. They've already lost Jerry Blanton. When we come back in just a few moments, we'll find out the extent of Gary Spaney's injury. Meanwhile, here, 37-20 Chiefs. And about one and a half at the KC seven-yard line. Do you want me to guess, or will it be to Frank Pollard? That's who I'd go for. 4.5 last year on the average. I'd go to him right now. Well, it looks like Malone just changed the play at the line. Let's see what happens. 
Abercrombie did he or didn't he? The Chiefs don't think he did. I think he probably checked off from Pollard and went to Abercrombie. He did. He thinking the did. same thing that they're looking for Pollard, I'm going to Abercrombie. Did you see him change it? I certainly did. When he came up to the line, he changed the play as he came up the line. There's the coaches again all excited. Let's take a look at that play. Now watch this right here on the end as Abercrombie doesn't get the turn up there and has to go around the wide end. Now watch this pull down right here. Darren Cherry. Boy, that's why he's all pro. Well, I'm sure that Mark Malone is going to have some conversation with Chuck Noll. Uh, see that? Yeah. Webster, Webster throws his arms up in the air. Well, you don't want to go wide on a fourth down and, and two feet to go. You, you want to go up. If you're not going to make it up behind your blocking backs, you're just not going to make it. And they went wide, and, they, and there's a bigger chance. You've got to run farther, and there's a bigger chance to get dumped, and they did. If you change it, it would better work, and it didn't work that time. Here it is Brown. Now, see, here is where the Chiefs need a running game. You're leading 37-20 with 12-11 to go. Let's see if they can find one. Today's game is brought to you by Mazda, who invites you to experience the remarkable Mazda RX-7. By Federal Express Zap Mail, an exact copy delivered door-to-door -door in just two hours. And by Castro, motor oil engineered for today's smaller, higher revving engines. Back here at Three Rivers, Bill Wilkerson, along with Dave Rowe. The Steelers and the Chiefs. The Chiefs have the better of it. 37-20, second and eight for the Chiefs at their own nine-yard line. Let's see if they want to put it up here. Delay to Theotis Brown. Gets outside the 10. But, Bill, you made a very valid point. The Chiefs really do need a running game right here. Theotis Brown there. There it is, right along the line of scrimmage. The Steelers see it. There's Hinkle. He gets blocked out of it. Cole gets blocked out of it. Boy, those Chiefs are really blocking, aren't they? Yes, they are. Kansas yes, City, 7 out of 13 on third down. I think the odds makers had the Steelers six point favorites in this ballgame. What do they know? Well, they're going to be disappointed if it continues like this. This is going to be an interesting play right here for Todd Blackledge. Again, you know, the poise of that young man we've talked about. Tough situation throw against the Steeler old pros, and here they come. 36 at the 11. Oh, excellent tackle. Prevents the first down. Uh-uh. I bet he got it. You think so? Yep. Well, they're marking it down. He does have it. <laughs> you have eagle eyes. Oh, I'll tell you, the eyes of a defensive lineman. It is. <laughs> a first down. That's two out of two for you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> is that what you did during scrimmage downs? Work, watch the flag. <laughs> Wow, how would you like to have those yards? It's 1,351 yards on 80 receptions. That's approximately or more than one-fourth of all of the yardage that Bill Kenny threw for last year. Blackledge is the quarterback now with a first and 10 at his own 18-yard line. Going back up top. He's got Hancock, and Hancock doesn't have the ball. Chris Brown on the coverage. I can say that he has earned his pay this afternoon. Well, one thing you have to really be pleased with, or uh, Makovic has to be pleased with for Kansas City, is that they have played almost errorless football. They have not had the penalties that, that usually are in a game. I bet we haven't seen three or four penalties. San Diego continuing to lead Minnesota 42-10. The Vikings have come up with a touchdown in that ball game. New England, close ball game against Joe Ferguson and Buffalo, 21-17. Ferguson, a couple of touchdown passes to Denard and Hunter. Atlanta 33 to 21. Gerald Riggs, Steve Bartkowski to Bailey, George Rogers on the scoring in that ball game. Flag on the play. Have a flag on the play on the field. This appears to be, as we see a procedure call against the Chiefs, starting out to be an exciting 1984. <laughs> well, one thing about it, there's going to be an awfully lot of scoring. We've got 57 points in this ball game, and Pittsburgh is known for their defense. Well. Ball start, left guard, prior to the snap, still second down. Now, you just saw John Makovic talking to Ed Becklin. The plays are sent in to the Kansas City huddle by the tight end. So you'll always see Makovic turn to either Willie Scott or Ed Beckman to give him the play to take in the Todd Blackledge. Look there, Calvin Sweeney leaving the field with a groin pull or a hamstring. The He's got a wrap around his left knee, too. 
There's been an awful lot of cramps out here. You wouldn't expect it with only 81 degrees today, but it is on AstroTurf, and, and they are experiencing an awful lot of cramps. Mike Ledge on second and 15, and right through the hands of Ed Beckman. Well, Beckman's play was his own number, mm. but it wasn't a well-thrown pass. Maybe could have been caught. Well, he had Gary Dunn running down his throat. Wow, Gary Dunn get a, give a great fake that time and faked out Brad Buddy, and he just came right up the, the gut on uh, Blackledge. He had no time at all, but it was interesting. He didn't even get sacked then. He threw the ball away. He gets rid of the ball. That's that vision. They're always looking forward. They're always, they see where the pressure's coming from. Well, the Steelers' secondary is dropping deep up near the 30-yard line. Let's see if the Chiefs try to come underneath with a post pattern to Carlos Carson or Stefan Page. On third and 15, from the 13. He's got plenty of time. There's a flag. Oh, what a holding call on that time. I guarantee you that was the... Keith Gary was held like you would not believe. Well, he was spotted by someone as Brian Hinkle got a hand in there, too. Well, they'll probably decline the penalty and again take the ball because they didn't complete the pass and it's going to bring up fourth down. Holding, number 76, offense, penalty decline, fourth down. The rookie, John Alt, was caught holding. I'll tell you, you can hear you can hear his teeth grind. <laughs> I looked across the field ahead of him, and boy, oh boy, his teeth are just grinding right now. But that's quite a tribute to him, third among active coaches, 147 wins behind two pretty good guys, Landry and Shula. Fairly decent, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think their names are pretty much Not household too bad. words. Yeah. <laughs> it's Lewis Lips at the 48. Ooh, does he get a boomer? That's one of Arnold's better kicks of his career. And Lewis Lips sees no daylight as Albert Lewis is right on top of him. How about him? That's Mark Catano heading back to the sideline. 37-20 Steelers here at Three Rivers. But, but more importantly, Blackledge there has a hand problem. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Meanwhile, the Steelers have first and 10 at their own 27-yard line. They need a lot of points in a hurry. That's Malone. Where is his target? There is Lewis Lips. He's got the football at the 40-yard line. <laughs> Folks, I think we're looking at something special at number 83 right there. And look at him stretching out his legs again. Cramps. Look right there. He's laying on the floor trying. But let's watch Lewis Lips here. They call him Mr. Excitement. They drafted him to take the Lynn Swan position. And he's not disappointing him today. That's a well-thrown well ball. Lips catches it in traffic. Almost comes out of this at the end. That was Ross and Cherry bringing him down, but Lewis Lips gets the job done, and I think that is a cramp situation as he's walking off under there. By the way, Todd Blackledge, we think, hit his hand on a helmet. Lips score for 134 this afternoon. There's the new quarterback. You want to guess? We'll tell you who that is in just a second. You will never guess. I'll tell you that right now. And is it a catch or not? Yes, it's a first down by Stallworth. At the 27-yard line of Kansas City. <laughs> oh, Kansas City can't believe it. They're all over there talking. Said, you got to be kidding me. He didn't catch that thing, did he? Sandy Oshetsky, the rookie out of Arizona State. 6'5 and a half, 202, a free agent. He only played one game his senior year and then was injured. That's probably why you didn't hear an awful lot about him. The interesting thing about that is that both injuries to quarterbacks for Kansas City have happened the same way. Bill Kenny hit his thumb on the helmet of an offensive lineman and, and shattered his thumb. He'll be out six weeks, and now the same thing has happened to Todd Blackledge. What happens is the offensive lineman dropped too deep. You hit your hand on it, and it can break fingers in a hurry. Well, I'm sure I hope that's not what the case is. Blackledge as Pollard gets upset by Lloyd Burris. Pushing and shoving there at the end, and that's the final. The 49ers 30, Detroit 27. Gary Danielson had a pass to Leonard Thompson of 49 yards. And then, with four seconds to go in the football game, Ray Worsing, 22-yard field goal, and that was the winner as the 49ers beat Detroit 30-27. What a great story about Ray Worsing. Cut from San Diego, had nowhere to go, got a tryout in San Francisco, and has come on to be one of the outstanding kickers in the National Football League. He, along with Lowry and... It seems like kickers Anderson. just find themselves. Yeah, they have some of the best percentage. There's a draw play to Pollard. He's going nowhere. 
The fans aren't going to like that. No, I don't think they do. Well, they want to see the ball thrown. They know, they realize with only eight minutes to go in the game, they've got to get touchdowns, and they're not going to get them by running two-yard runs. However, and Chuck knows defense, not that he needs any, the Chiefs know that the Steelers have to put the football up. Once in a while, you've got to do something to get that pressure off your quarterback. Preferably something that works. That yep. last play did not. Well, you try to outguess. When they're thinking pass, you drop a drop a screenplay or you drop a, a draw on them, and it really fouls them up. It just keeps them off guard. They look like they want to blitz on this one. They don't. They check off. But the ball is batted down. Looked as though <laughs> Lindstrom, Dave Lindstrom, got a hand on the football. Now, this could be almost a penalty because watch the offensive lineman, number 61, I think it is Blake Wingle, catches the ball. Maybe it's not Blake. Let's see who catches this ball at the end. But the ball is batted there. Moss got the hand on it. Yeah, and it was caught by an offensive lineman. We didn't quite see it, but it was caught by an offensive lineman who quickly dropped it. And that's what the discussion is right now by the officials. Yeah, you yeah. can't catch it. You can bat it down, but you can't catch it. Well, what he did is he actually caught the ball and then threw it down. And it was just a big discussion as to whether he did it. Down. That was the discussion. It was tipped. So he was able to catch it because it was tipped and he quickly threw it down. Now Ouija Thompson checks in along with Greg Garrity and John Stallworth. Woo! Mm. How about 500 yards passing in the game? Well, why not? <laughs> Malone tries to get a few more here and boy, he's got tight coverage there. No flag is going to be thrown. I guess Ouija Thompson trying to get that football. 6-6-2-10 out of Florida State. Little trivia here. Do you know Ouija's first name? Well, yes, because I'm an astute learner. I know that it is <laughs> Willis. <laughs> All right, I'll ask you about another one when we come back in just a moment. Black Ledge is okay, and we'll be back here in Pittsburgh in just a moment. Kerry Parker, interference or not? Well, I believe it is interference right there. That's uh, He cannot run through his back to get the ball and he evidently hit him early but of course it wasn't called so it's just another play but interesting nonetheless yes first and ten for the Chiefs of their own 24 Blackledge is back in there so he apparently is okay oh we're talking about great nicknames in this game and you correctly guess that Ouija Thompson's real name is Willis because his younger brother couldn't say it but we have another name for you hey we also have another great game for you oh, too boy. The Raiders in Houston, Cincinnati and Denver, the Jets and the Colts. Do we have a new America's team? Absolutely. When I played for the Raiders, I thought they were America's team, and I'm glad to see that they really are the America's team. There also is a club there with a new home and, and a new dome. A new home and new dome. That rhymes. That's the Indianapolis Colts. <laughs> Don't ask uh, Raymond Berry about uh, the Indianapolis Colts. <laughs> Black Ledge going to throw again. He's got a target. Looks like Henry Marshall, a couple yards shy. Now, shortly, those of you in Cincinnati will be leaving us to watch the Cincinnati and Denver game, but we will keep you informed of the game throughout the rest of the afternoon on NFL 84. I believe that man, his presence has not been felt today because of the injury. Look at that score right there. 35-17 final. Mm -hmm. Marino, big day for the Miami Dolphins. Washington evidently has some problems. Indeed. Marino threw one, two, three, four touchdown passes, and Duper caught two of them. Well, you know, the Giants have been picking back at Philadelphia all the time. They've just gone ahead 28 27. Third and one at the 34. They've got the first down, the Chiefs do. As the Otis Brown goes off left tackle, Robin Cole makes the tackle. Oh, back to my uh, great yeah, nickname. Who was the nickname? Uh, Stump Mitchell. What is his real name? For the Atlanta Falcons? No, 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 for the St. Louis Cardinals. Oh, okay. Number 30 for the St. Louis Cardinals. <laughs> Stump Mitchell. Stump Mitchell. I think you've stumped me. <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible. I'll give you the answer anyway. His name is Lavonia Stump Mitchell. Oh, I had one of my good friends was called Lavonia. <laughs> yeah, he probably changed it to Stump, didn't he? <laughs> First and 10. At the 37 for the Chiefs, only 5 4 on the clock. They will be content with Herman Hurd going around the corner, but Herman not out of bounds at this juncture. That was an interesting run that he changed acceleration so quick. 
Baseball time next Friday. You have a ticket to the hottest games in town when NBC Sports presents primetime baseball. Now, some of you will see the Cubs scoring off against the Mets in one of the tightest pennant races in baseball, while others will see Reggie Jackson as he goes for his 500th home run when the California Angels take on the Chicago White Sox. And in that pregame show, Tony Armour's of Boston will take on Darrell Evans of Detroit in the Gatorade Super Slam Home Run Contest. Friday night at the ballpark, beginning at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on NBC Sports, the home of the 1984 World Series. Looks as though we will have some unfamiliar faces in this World Series. Blackledge under the lay to Herman Hurd, and Herman gets nowhere. You know, an interesting feeling as I look around this stadium, uh, and the Steeler fans have never left a game like they're leaving today. Evidently, the presence of not having Bradshaw, not having Franco, and they're in a shock. Look at the empty seats around this stadium right here. Well, in the good old days when you had Franco and Bradshaw, the game was never over until the final whistle. Absolutely, and I've stayed here and heard that fan, and you could hardly even hear the snap count out there on the ball because they were screaming and yelling so loud. You don't see Franco's army, and, and there were nine, you know, this was the 95th sellout. There were a lot of people in the stands just a little while ago. Were you here for the Immaculate Reception? No, I wasn't here for that, fortunately. <laughs> well, you needn't cry in your beer any longer. <laughs> There's the Otis Brown. Now the Chiefs are unveiling their running game, hoping to kill the final four minutes. Sam Washington made the tackle. John Makovic has really got to be pleased about this effort. Well, the thing that was so evident was their exuberance in, at the hotel this morning, but they had such a confident feeling. I don't know whether that's Makovic or, or you know, if it's his so much, his philosophy, but they were very, very confident about the way they were going to attack. Pittsburgh felt that they could do a lot of things, and I think a lot of people had written them off. Just said, hey, look, this is a rebuilding year. Bill Kenny, with the great year he had last year, wasn't going to be playing in the game, and this is just a write-off year, but boy, oh boy, did he play well. Well, that will be down at the two-yard line, as Lewis Lips couldn't do anything with it. Called for a fair catch to slow down the man coming down, so it's being downed at the two-yard line for the score, 37-20 KC happy as he talks to Scott Campbell. People around him say he's mellowed. I wonder why. Well, he can unmellow today. I know he has mellowed. They say he's much more, you know, open and easy going because he, he's changed so many players, but this can certainly unmellow you today. And a miscue here would make him real unmellow. They're at their own two-yard line. The backs are in the end zone, and Malone's going to throw. He pumps once, and he's got a target. So at the 46-yard line for a big first down from there to all the way to the 46-yard line, a 52-yard reception. Now watch this play. This is amazing. Now watch right here. You'll see the fake pump by Maloney. Standing in his own end zone. There's the fake pump. He gets the out pattern. He turns it up, and he's off to the races, and there you are. That could have been a touchdown. Yeah, he sort of veered off out of bounds. Maybe he didn't know where he was. <laughs> Have we had some offense today or what? Seven, almost 700 total yards. Wow. But how can the Steelers have that many yards and trail 37 to 20? Well, their, their, their plays have been the big plays. The 80-yard bomb, the lips. Look at Stallworth there. Eight receptions, 167 yards. It harkens back to the good old days when Swan was on the other side. Jim Smith was here. People like that. Watch out. He gets it away. And under heavy traffic there. It is not caught. It's bobbled at the 35. That's Benny Cunningham, who was a target earlier and had the ball intercepted. Well, the thing about that play is that Malone took so much time. It was amazing. I didn't think that he would, he would ever throw that ball. He sat back there and sat back there and sat back there. There's Jack Lambert. He's done for the day. Now, one point we should mention with him hurt. The Steelers took a chance. They liked their wide receivers so much. They liked their young backs so much until they sacrificed the linebacking position and kept extra wide receivers and extra backs and is hurting them right now. It always seems that when you make a decision like that, that it stands out like a sore thumb and it hurts you. Sure does. There's Malone again. There's Cunningham too far. One thing that Malone is not doing that, that's really interesting is that he's not using the clock to his advantage. That time, the 30-second clock went all the way down to about five seconds before he played that play. In this situation, with, with them being behind as much as they are, I realize it's going, to be, it's going to take a minor miracle for them to get back in the game, but he uses so much time before he throws the ball. 
Alone seven out of 14 for 152 yards this afternoon, and that's a rarity here at Three Rivers. All those empty seats. Pittsburgh two out of 10 on third downs. They have third and 10 right now. Oh, what a catch down at the 18 yard line. There he is again, Lewis Lips. Mm. Well, on that 27 yard reception, I think he has convinced me that he's all they said he would be. He certainly has, and I'm sure he's convinced Chuck Knoll, who knew that he was a player. He said he's got the right approach. Look the way he turns around and comes back to the ball. He's going to be Mr. Excitement, just as Lynn Swan was in this stadium. He will be Mr. Excitement for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Along with the hurry up offense, almost stumbles. Plenty of time, but he couldn't get it to Greg Garrity, and he had lips deeper in the end zone. Right now, we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Channel 11, WPXI TV, Pittsburgh. Well, it's been a Kansas City afternoon, 37 to 20. Lips, five catches, 162 yards. Stallworth, eight for 167 yards, but they're trailing 37 20. It's been a great afternoon for Todd Blackledge, is what he's been. He's played, he's played phenomenal football. Oh, well, Dad didn't win this one, did he? No, he certainly did, and I guarantee you, he is really frustrated. He must have a lot of pride in his son, as we talked about. But That's Ron again. Blackledge, the offensive line coach of the Steelers. Where's the target? Well, he didn't find him until it was too late. Everybody in the end zone, Ouija Thompson, along with Stallworth, had company. Pittsburgh's offensive line is giving a lot of time to Malone, but it just doesn't seem as if he's coming off his primary receiver. When his primary receiver is, is covered, and there's a big part of the story, too, three turnovers, but when his primary receiver is covered, he just looks like he's just floundering, trying to find somebody to throw the ball to. Very it's either true. great coverage by Kansas City, or else it's just Mark Malone can't pick up the secondary receiver. Well, Coming down to the two-minute warning, 2.17, it's third and 10 for Mark Malone and the Steelers. Trailing, 37-20. And here comes a blitz by Calvin Daniels, and he is being hit, gets away from one, and he's not going to get that one there in time as Ouija Thompson catches it out of bounds. Our spotters here this afternoon have been Tim Fogarty and Jim McGinley, statistician George Jordan, also helping in the booth, John Rooney. There's Daniels who had blitzed. He didn't get to him, but one of his teammates almost did. Well, they put a lot of pressure on him. He feels the backside pressure. He comes out this way. Cornerback blitz. Gets away from that, but watch the pressure from the backside. He unloads the ball, but you see what's coming into your picture. Oh. <laughs> Boy, that will really take the joy out of your dance tonight. You're going to have some sore ribs. That's why quarterbacks get paid so much. Mm -hmm. Defense linemen don't. Well, that's very true. <laughs> Unless you're Randy White. That's true, too. Fourth and ten. Malone, there's holding on Mike Bell. Somebody really gave Bell a ride for his money out there. The left tackle of the Steelers did everything but put handcuffs on him. Malone, very slow getting up. Do you see Mike Bell dancing with that left tackle? Oh, boy. He's running around him. Those are KC coaches, of course, but, and they're happy. But, again, he, Malone has taken so much time to get rid of that ball. It just seems like he's all day. You want to say, throw it, throw it, throw it. Well, there's Mark Malone. Now, the Chiefs haven't been in a playoff in 12 years. So you can imagine how much this game means to them. Well, they've changed the entire philosophy in Kansas City. They've changed coaches, of course, with the, with the change to that man. McEvick, but again, everything has changed. The players are changed, their attitudes are changed, and this will totally change their whole philosophy of the game. Now look at that young man. That's Sandy Oshetsky with 2.06 on the clock, getting some playing time, his first in the National Football League. And I bet he doesn't pass it. And you're right about that. Larry Ricks wishes that he had, though. <laughs> You know, again this year, we're going to be treated to some of the most exciting finales from NFL history. They're called fantastic finishes, and here is one of them. 
Alcoa presents Fantastic Finishes, 1983. It's 24 to 21, San Francisco over Atlanta on a rainy night in Georgia. Just two seconds left for the Falcons as Steve Barkowski on courts one high and deep toward the end zone. Uh-oh, Billy Johnson falls down, but he pops back up just as the ball is tipped to him. He scrambles right and lunges toward the goal line for what may be the winning touchdown. It's a late call, but there it is. Touchdown. And enjoy NFL highlights when he gets there because he'll be on them. Coming up next, the Raiders in Houston. Will Warren Moon be what they think he will be in the National Football League? Will the Oakland Raiders repeat as America's number one team? No, but the L.A. Raiders may. Oh, that's right. I always call them. You know, that's funny that you say that, because I always call them the Oakland yeah, Raiders. Yeah, I do, too. Oh, boy, they'll be the Is Oakland Raiders Is that what your ring says? Or let's see your My ring. My ring says the Oakland Raiders. I'll be darned. <laughs> well, you're entitled. <laughs> Second and ten now. Oshetsky. There's Rooks, but he does not get away from the Steeler linebackers as we go under two minutes now. Steelers Brown has had a productive afternoon. Mm -hmm. 17 carries, 58 yards. He's played well. Larry Rooks, another one of the youngsters, second-year men out of Michigan in a trade with the Dallas Cowboys. That is Pittsburgh's first, first, first timeout. That is Pittsburgh's first timeout. Well, that's why Sandy Oshetsky is going to go to the sideline and converse with... John McAvick, you can see the cast on the hand of Bill Kinney there. Yeah, that's the thumb that he broke. Again, he'll be out six weeks with that with that thumb. You think Oshevsky will throw a pass? It'll be his first NFL pass. We'll see. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Michael Weissman. The coordinating producer of NBC's football is Ted Nathanson. And today's telecast has been produced by Glenn Adamo, directed by Bob Levy. NFL 84, produced by John J. Filippelli. NFL 84 update producer, Tom Roy. NFL 84, directed by Bucky Guts. Technical directors, Tab Butler and Salvatore Nikita. The associate directors, Steve Rosen. NFL 84 associate producer, Rick Diamond. And a tip of the hat to a great camera crew who caught all the action when it happened. Well, there's the story here in Pittsburgh. The fans feel that the game is over and... With about a minute and 46 seconds, being the eternal optimist I am. <laughs> what are you going to do with a minute 46, <laughs> except get a hot dog and a cold one? <laughs> I believe it may be over, too, for Pittsburgh for this day, but Pittsburgh plays too well. 37-20, big day for the Chiefs. Minute 46 to go. I think Sandy Oshetsky has been informed not to do anything funny with the football. He's actually going to throw it. I can't believe it. It's incomplete. Why would you throw it there? It's third down, among other reasons, but did you expect him to put it up? Yes, I really did. To tell you the truth, it was a safe pass. It was an out pattern, so it wasn't going to be intercepted if he overthrew it. But again, that's been their philosophy all day. They've challenged the Pittsburgh Steelers, and they've been successful with it. They've challenged them with the pass. Blackledge has passed them silly today. And there's no sense to change philosophies right now. Well, John Makovic said coming into any ball game, he's going to throw 30 or 40 times. And he's been very successful. He said he didn't care what the other team did. He was going to throw the football. No question about that. Well, that's a great philosophy because that's the philosophy that Oakland had when they did so well. And, and because they do so well, they do not let the other team dictate to them what they play. There's Lewis Lips. And he shows you he's a great kick returner as well. 48-yard kick from Jim Arnold. Jim Arnold's had a very good punting day. Yes, he has. Look at that. He took his helmet off. Actually, he lost his helmet because he's made, he made the tackle on that. <laughs> Kickers never like to get involved in that physical action. Well, out of Vanderbilt, he's only in his second year. Miami 35-17. Big day for Dan Marino and Mark Duper over the Redskins. San Diego and Dan Fouts, 42-13 over the Minnesota Vikings, a final. And Ray Worsing's last second field goal won the game there, 30-27. And the New York Giants finally came back. They had a Philadelphia had a big lead, and the Giants came back and won 28-27. Red Malone has a first and 10 from the Chiefs' 41-yard line with a minute 25 to go. Is he looking for a screen? Now. Before I tell you that was not intentional grounding, let's take a look at some scores. New England, barely by Buffalo, 21-17. Grogan a big day for the New England Patriots. 
Atlanta, fourth quarter. They, oh, they're doing boy. some scoring in that one. It's a tight ball game. Defensive struggle, 33-28. Oh, yeah, really. I think the defense took the <laughs> afternoon off. How about that score? Chicago, Walter Payton, 34-7 over Tampa Bay. Franco is not here, so Walter is chasing Jim Brown. And Green Bay, fourth quarter. The Cardinals are coming back, 24-23. Isn't that your old team, the Cardinals? Yes, indeed. <laughs> I watched them play a playoff against <laughs> the Packers, and I'll tell you, those wide receivers, Lofton and Jefferson, were unbelievable. He stood in the pocket. One-handed catch by Frank Pollard, first down. I thought Pollard wasn't a great receiver. <laughs> He's changed that today, but boy, did Mark Malone get hit at the tail end of that play. Wow. Now, it's interesting. On that 20-yard grab. Let's watch this play again. Let's see what really happened. Now, right here is the end. Watch, there's where Malone gets hit. Blau. And look right. Watch this catch. One-hand twisting catch by Pollard. If he's not a good receiver, I'd hate to see the guys backing him up as a wide receiver or as a good receiver. Talk about a difference in philosophy. The Kansas City Chiefs quarterbacks are taught as we look at Mark Malone to get rid of the ball in 3 or 3.5 seconds. The L.A. Raider quarterbacks are taught to hold the ball until the very last second. That's why Plunkett and quarterbacks like that are beaten up so much. That's true. But what Oakland does so well that you don't see, I don't see Pittsburgh doing today, is Oakland comes back for the ball. When their wide receivers make those, those quick outs, they come back for the ball. They come back four or five yards. The old Freddie Belitnikov, Clifford, Branch, Dave Casper would continually come back. Malone's statistics are not bad. 198 yards on nine completions. I mean, that, that's those are tremendous stats, but that really does not tell the story today. The story today has been Kansas City has dominated them on offense, and they've been able to come up with a big play on defense, and they've been able to stop them on defense. But when this game is over, that man there will have to find out what he's going to do for his two starting tackles. Mm. Because both David Lutz and Matt Herkenhoff went out of the ball game with injuries. Well, Herkenhoff evidently strained his knee, and we saw Lutz called, uh, carried off earlier on a stretcher, and he looked as if he had a lower leg problem, too. They always say, you always ask the coach, how are you going to do this year? And the first thing that they say to you, if we stay healthy, that's the first words out of their mouth. And both those coaches said that to us in, in their pregame talks. If we stay healthy, we can compete with anybody. Well, our 16-game schedule is a long way to go when you drop people in your first one. One minute exactly. Well, the Chiefs leading 37-20, and that man trying to get into the end zone. That's Mark Malone. He's got Pollard and Abercrombie behind him. It's first and 10, and he was intending that for Greg Garrity, but it wasn't even close. Thirty-seven twenty. Kansas City very impressive here this afternoon. Oh boy, how about that? Seven hundred and twenty-nine yards, if my mathematics are correct. Well, Stallworth and Lips really put some numbers up on the board, but unfortunately, everything the Chiefs did was effective and produced scores, plus those couple of turnovers. So fifty-seven seconds ago, second and ten from the KC 23-yard line. Well, he didn't pick up his safety valve because Calvin Daniels was standing there looking Walter Abercrombie right in the eye. But again, did you see how long he took to throw the ball? He just kept on holding the ball and holding and waiting for the wide receiver to come to come open. You can't do that. You've got to come off that wide receiver and go to somebody else. Now they're in hurry-up offense. It's going to be third down at 25 yards. That's the fifth sack. And they've lost almost 40 yards on sacks today. Ken Kramer got the last one, 41 seconds and counting. Alone looking. See, there he is. Well, that was a great catch by Ouija Thompson if they give it to him. There's Ouija Thompson right there. Rookie out of Florida State. Do you, you think I'll have time as we listen to referee? Do you think I'll have time to hurry home and see that Oakland Raiders game? Excuse me. Did I say Oakland Raiders? <laughs> Los Angeles Raiders and the Houston Oilers game. That's going to be a... Oh, boy, would I love to get home and see that one just for kind of sentimental value. Why do you keep saying Oakland? They don't exist anymore. <laughs> Maybe they'll go back. <laughs> Take that ring back and get it changed to the Los Angeles Raiders. Now, I got an Oakland Raiders ring on my finger, and I'm proud of that thing, and they'll always be the Oakland Raiders, and I'm sure half of America, even though we're going to call them the Los Angeles Raiders, I always thought they were America's team. You probably <laughs> call them the Baltimore Colts, too, don't you? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, some things never die. 
been a pretty good ball game, although for him and his teammates, it didn't quite turn out the way many had expected. Well, Pittsburgh put together a streak last year where they won nine or ten ball games in a row, and then, of course, they lost the three or four out of five or four out of five at the latter part of the season. They, they can put together a streak any time and, and really, really put this thing back together. Well, we have only 29 seconds to go. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> pound for pound, we may be the biggest thing in broadcasting. I think we are the biggest thing in the <laughs> announcing field. <laughs> uh, no more groceries for this broadcasting crew. <laughs> well, we have 29 seconds to go. And Malone should look toward the end zone. He does. Touchdown, Lewis Lips. Well, he finally beat Albert Lewis. Yes, he did. It was a well-thrown ball. You have to give Malone credit on this throw. But that was a very frustrated young man there, Lewis Lips. He's had a tough day all day long. He's played exceptionally well. Been one of the real bright spots to the, on the team. But watch Lips as he catches this ball. He turns completely around. It's going to be right in the center of your screen right there. He fakes a little bit, runs him deep. Now watch, he has to come all the way back around underneath. There's the pass. Hell holds onto the ball exceptionally well at the end. But that's frustration right there. How's that for stats for your first game? Six receptions, 183 yards, over thir almost 30 yards. Well, it is over 30 yards to carry. Very impressive. 37-27. So as we told you at the outset, we expected some scoring. But quite frankly, we didn't expect <laughs> this much scoring in this particular way. 64 points is no, <laughs> is no credit to either defense, to be honest with you. That's very true. So with only 23 seconds to go, the Steelers, as you look at Chuck Knoll there, don't have much to be happy about because they're going to be back in action fairly quickly. Well, Kansas City thinks they're going to kick an onside kick. I'd be very surprised if they did. I don't think that, you know, with 37 to 27, even as optimistic as I am and only 23 seconds left, I don't think there's much of a chance. But evidently, he's going to try it. Now, there's a new rule in effect this year. If you kick two onside kicks out of bounds consecutively, the other club gets to keep the ball wherever it goes out of bounds the last time. Now, very shortly, there you see the professor and his student, Kenny on the left, Blackledge on the right. On Thursday, the Steelers have to play at the Jets with all of their injury problems and this game in the back of their minds. They really have a short week. That's quite a duo right there for Kansas City. Well, did they get 10 yards or not? Absolutely. He caught it. He can come up and do it. And I believe it's kind of all over but the shouting in Kansas City. Well, that man may be the quarterback on Thursday because of the concussion to David Woodley. He seemed to uh, get better as he got a little bit more playing time. His problem is inexperience. Absolutely. He is, as I said, played in the shadows of, of the Bradshaw and the Stout and now in Woodley. But he has to get more playing time. And I'm sure Pittsburgh's going to be saying to him, the coaches are going to say, you've got to get rid of that ball. But those are impressive stats. Look at that. 11 completions, 24 attempts, over 200 yards. And that's, that's really the mark of a great quarterback, over 200 yards. Everybody judges by that. So what do you do? you got to play on Thursday. Lambert is hurt. A couple of other players hurt, including your quarterback. Now what? Well, they're hurt on Sunday, but by Thursday, they'll probably be well. Well, as you see, the clock wind down. There's a victorious John Makovic as the Chiefs win it 37-27. So with a final score, Kansas City 37, Pittsburgh 27. We'll be back with a second half of our doubleheader. But first of all, we'd like to tell you that we've enjoyed the action here this afternoon, especially looking at a rookie like Lewis Lips and Todd Blackledge, the second-year quarterback. Well, there's an awful lot of there's an awful lot of.